Time being 7 o'clock, I will call to order the City Council meeting for Monday, July 10th, 2023, and the clerk will call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yep. Vincent? Here. Gibson? Here. Austin? Here. Michaud? Here. Witham? Here. Girding? Here. Cameron? Here. Messier? Here. Chair recognizes Councillor Cameron, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Brings us to our recognition of indigenous people, our native ancestral <coughs> Americans. This meeting is taking place on Nadi Kana, which is the unceded traditional ancestral homeland of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki people, past and present. We acknowledge with honor, with gratitude, the land, waterways, living beings, and the Abenaki, the people who have stewarded Nadi Kana throughout the generations. Brings us to agenda item number four, which is public hearings, which is scheduled for this evening. Our first public hearing for this evening is ordinance number 2423 to amend chapter 29, administrative code section 29.8.5, disposal of city property. Does anyone wish to speak in favor or against ordinance number 2423? No. Sorry. Can anyone wish to speak in favor or against Ordinance number 2423 to amend Chapter 29, Administrative Code, Section 29.8.5, Disposal of City Property. None being so, I'll close the public hearing on Ordinance number 2423 and open the public hearing on Resolution 5223 to authorize the City Manager to sign an application for the Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, to upgrade the parking lot, install air conditioning, new windows, playground, uh, playgrounds, upgrade classrooms and make certain building structure improvements at the Summersworth Early Learning Center. I'll also recognize the city clerk. So we have specific language we need to read on this uh, resolution. Community Development Block Grant or CDBG funds are available to municipalities through the New Hampshire Community Development Finance Authority. Up to $500,000 annually, uh, annually is available on a competitive basis for housing and public facilities, economic development, microenterprise and emergency activities. Up to $25,000 is available for planning grants. All projects must directly benefit a majority of low and moderate income persons. This is a proposed application to the Community Development <coughs> Finance Authority for a CDBG public facilities grant of $500,000. The funds will support the renovation of the Summersworth Early Learning Center located at 35 Bartlett Ave, Summersworth. Proposed in improvements include to upgrade the parking lot, install air conditioning, new windows, new playgrounds, upgrade classrooms, and make certain building structure improvements. This project satisfies the na national ob objective of low to moderate income housing and income verification is proposed to ensure that individuals and households served qu qualify as low to moderate income. This project conforms with Summersworth's housing and community development plans goal of goal promote activities that protect the health and safety of residents and visitors city objective one support new or rehabilitate existing public facilities including child care facilities to enhance the health and well-being of children short-term and long-term goal further the proposed housing and community develop development plan outlines goals for summersworth housing summersworth excuse me including encourage a varied stock of safe, sanitary, decent, and affordable housing for persons of all age and income groups, encourage economic development activities to increase quality industrial and commercial development, encourage the protection, enhancement, <coughs> and renovation of significant historic and architectural resources in the community, preserve and promote the town's historically and culturally significant structures. The Residential Anti-Displacement and Relocation Assistance Plan states in general that if the city were to undertake a CDBG project which involved displacement and resulting relocation that would follow the Uniform Relocation Act requirements. The Residential Anti-Displacement and Relocation Assistance Plan outlines the measures that would take to find comparable housing for persons or businesses displaced and or relocated. Anyone wish to speak in favor or against the proposed application? <coughs> None being so, anyone wish to speak in favor or against the Housing and Community Development Plan? 
None being so, anyone wish to speak in favor or against the project specific residential anti displacement plan? None being so, I will close the public hearing on resolution 5223. Brings us to agenda item number five, which is comments by visitors. The Summersworth City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinion and views at the City Council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the Council wishes to suspend the rules. The Speaker shall not enter into any debate with any person, the Mayor, City Council members, City Manager, or the Department Heads. At this time, we welcome comments by visitors. Please come forward, state your name, your address, and the ward you live in if you have that applicable information. I know we have several visitors tonight. I'm assuming a lot of this is for the National Guard property. This is the time when we would love to hear your opinions. So you can just come forward right to the podium and again, yep, come on up, sir. Good evening and welcome. If you can just state your name and your address for the record. And if you have the ward, we welcome that too. I live at 67 Cross Drive. I have to start by saying... You know, if you can, I, sir, if you don't mind, if you can touch just the back of the mic. Yeah, this wee button here. Yeah, that wee button. There, there you All go. Right. Perfect. We want to make sure All everyone right. can hear you. Uh, <laughs> you know, extra housing is great, but we are already undaunted by traffic that loves to cut up Crest Drive every time the red light changes at the end of Blackwater Road. Or that long line of cars is coming down High Street and they'll cut up Drew Street to get around the traffic light. We're, we're being killed by cars now, and you want to enter another 200 and some odd cars to our street. You should, I live at the end of Crest Drive on 67. It's just about to the end there. I, you should hear the cars that don't even obey the 25 or 30 mile an hour speeding limit that's in effect now. And I've never once seen a police car even go on that street to even try to do anything. And now I want, uh, so I'm totally against that. But no, having said that, if you're going to vote on it anyways, and think about it, deny access to Blackwater Road from this development. Think about the impact of that and send it down the other two streets that won't have an impact and empty straight on the Blackwater Road and put the traffic on there. But I'm gonna tell you though, uh, trying to get out of either end of Crest Drive right now is a nightmare. If I try to get on High Street, uh, do you think anybody will stop to let you out, even if there's a red light there at the Dunkin' Donuts? No, they won't. And if I go down the other end, and try to go either direction right now, you can't get out there. And now you're gonna enter all these cars back there again? It's a, you know, come on. If you're gonna do an impact study, do one. But somebody's gotta sit there and count bloody cars. Uh, so I'm, I'm totally against it, and I'm sure like everybody else you hear from Chris Drive is gonna be a, uh, we've been asking for years to get connected from High Street or from Drew Street for sewage but you won't do that for us, but yet you're gonna put in 200 houses at the end of Crest Drive and connect that to the Blackwater Road. Um, so I feel like I'm being neglected. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, but that's the way I feel. All right, so thank you for your time, I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Any further comments by visitors? Any further comments by visitors? Good evening and welcome. Take your, please take your time, take your time, please. None of us are going anywhere. <laughs> Good evening and welcome. Yeah, if you can just yeah, just touch the button in the back again. There we go. Okay, okay. can you Perfect. hear me now? Perfect. Thank you. All right, I lived there most of my life. Um, when my parents moved to Florida, I bought the home because I knew what kind of community it was. I was it was safe to grow up in, and that's what I wanted for my child. And as he started growing up, we got Walmart. So when Walmart came in, we came here at Pine Crest Drive and got that to be a one-way because it was full of cars. It was it wasn't even safe to take it for a walk. So now. 
it's a little bit safer. We can take the dogs for a walk. And now this may be going in and is very scary because there, there won't be any way to take two dogs for a walk on that street. The other day I was watching a nice family bike riding, two little kids. They're all over the place. If we have 250 cars, they're not going to be watching out for all these kids. Um, so I am also against it. And I have a letter. I'm not sure if you received it from the Heons. I just want to make sure you got that um, because she expressed that she wanted to be here but could not. So that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any further comments by visitors this evening? Any further comments by visitors? Come on up. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, City Councilors. My name is Cynthia Boven. I reside at 64 Crest Drive. Like Renee Markey, I've lived on that street my entire life. We grew up here. We attended schools here. We attend church here. We are um, part of the community. And so the thought of an apartment building of 250 units is going to radically change the landscape. It is now a neighborhood of one and two story family homes. They're single family residential homes. 250 units equals 250 cars plus. An apartment building means that there are tenants moving in and out constantly. There are visitors. There are delivery vans. You're talking about paving over a green open space with a parking lot. So needless to say, that's going to directly affect us. Drew Road, Edmond Street, Guy Street, Maple Street, Blackwater Road. Crest Drive is the only street off of Blackwater Road that goes to High Street. That means that everyone who's on Route 108 comes up Blackwater Road to get to High Street. High Street is congested. There's a backlog of cars constantly. Like my neighbor said, it's very difficult for us to get out of Crest Drive, either Blackwater Road or High Street. I think my other question really is, why is this property being developed? The city of Somersworth really doesn't have a community center. Why not use the property for a community center? A community center benefits the residents of Summersworth in their entirety. Children, families, that property could be utilized as a park. It could be utilized as a gathering space. It could be used for four seasonal recreational activities. There could be a pool for swimming. If you don't belong to the works, where do you go in Summersworth to have your children swim? I like to ski. I get on cross-country skis. I go down there and I cross-country ski. It's beautiful. It's green. There's trees. There's senior housing that their view now is you're going to be taken away if this, is if this goes through. You know, I think also, just in summary, strictly from a physical and mental health aspect, it would be a tremendous boom to this community. That's my my little talk. Thank, Thank you. you. Any further comments by visitors this evening? Please come forward, just state your name. Just, just got to turn the button back on. Thank you. Brad Fredette, 3 Blackwater Road, Summersworth, New Hampshire. Also, member of the zoning board here in town. I've had a chance to read the current proposal and in full disclosure, encourage several counselors and the mayor that the pr property should be developed for a community center. Um, I've read the proposal. Um, I'll tell you, first of all, I'll go through some of the points I come up with. As a member of the zoning board, you're asking, or the proposal is asking for what is going to amount to a radical rezoning and radical changes to that area. You're going to change a character of a neighborhood that's remained the same for a long time for one family and two family homes. Um, I, I, I own, as an indirect abutter, two and a half acres almost. What this tells me as an abutter is at 250 units over roughly five acres of land, you're approving 50 living units per acre. What is to stop me from putting my land on the market and attracting a developer wi willing to build a 75 or 100 unit apartment building? You already have many traffic concerns in that area. 
you have intersections that in the 40 years I've lived in that house have seen very minimal improvement to the point that they I incur more and more traffic and more accidents. I've approached multiple, multiple city managers, multiple public works personnel, and I'm told over and over again, the city has no money to fix it. We understand it's a problem. We have no money to fix it. You've, you've heard from multiple members of Crest Drive, residents on Crest Drive who have raised a concern that I agree with. You're putting more traffic in a residential area. They're estimating 250 cars. My guess is, based on the proposal, you're looking at more like five or 600 cars. You have a baseball field over there. You have a baseball field over there that's been maintained tirelessly by volunteers, including last night when I was over there at 8 o'clock and there were volunteers fixing the roof. I think if you're going to sell the property because that's what you decide you need to do, you need to make sure that you address the baseball field, including the fact that you currently have on-street parking during baseball games, which I would imagine are no longer in a situation that is safe or practical, especially in light of the fact that you have a brand new fire station there that with emergency personnel that need to be able to utilize that station 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You, it's totally non-conforming. This proposal does not address how that will be handled. I think it's disappointing that the city doesn't see and this council doesn't see more value in all of the work that the volunteers have done to maintain that field. In speaking to the volunteers, I said, do you have a problem with this proposal? I was told, well, I guess it's better than losing our field. I think that's very disappointing. To, to look at this proposal, you, you, you've got a proposal put forth by a developer who's a phenomenal developer, who does great projects, who owns several acres of land on Main Street that would be perfect for this project in the, in the form of the form of bleachery. As a member of the zoning board, I seem to remember several years ago that he came forth for a variance to build a multi-story residential facility in that space. You, but in, in what you're pricing this at, at $200,000, my understanding from what I received from city staff, out of that $200,000, the city is going to provide multi-years of tax relief if they grant this proposal and provide funds to demolish the building. So what we are doing in part is offering five acres plus of prime residential land at $40,000 an acre. As you've heard other people say, I agree. Why are you in a rush to sell? I, I don't understand that. And I've voiced and other people's have voiced the community center. The counter argument I've heard from multiple people is in three years we've asked and we've gotten not one proposal. I was told by a member of this council, the question, I would have no problem funding this, but the question is, if I build it, will they come? My question to you is, have you asked? Have you asked in a systematic manner via ballot question, via reaching out? knocking on doors. As far as I'm aware, the only meetings that took place on this, or the last three at least, took place in the middle of the workday. I don't have a problem with some sort of residential redevelopment if that's what is decided to be in the best interest of the city. I think that needs to be done after a feasibility study. I'm not aware that any real feasibility study has taken place on this. Where is the feasibility study? I was told we, don't, we, we can't justify the cost. What have we estimated the cost to be? What, what is the harm in putting a workshop or citizens volunteer committee together to explore some of these options? And in closing, I think we need to think about and we need to look at what just took place with the police station under the auspices of this council. It was years to the point that I think I spoke to the mayor and members of this council saying it was almost embarrassing as a lifelong citizen of this city to see over and over again in the Fosters that nobody was willing to come and do anything with it. And yet after several years of nothing solid, a realtor approached the city and turned that into a $200,000 windfall with a very enthusiastic developer. I think that is part of my issue with this. I, I don't think, I think we all get into a point 
where we live in our own work group and we forget that sometimes we need to step outside of that work group and do some outreach. And I think before entering into any type of agreement on this property, the ball needs to be put into citizens and I'm more than happy to do its court to approach abutters and approach the city question a ballot question and put something forth on this. It's time as a city that we continue what this mayor has started and members of this council have started and make a hard and fast attempt to invest more in the people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any, any further comments by visitors? Any further comments by visitors? Please come on up. Just state your name and your address. If you know your ward, we're happy to take that information too. Good evening. My name is Sandra Carrasco. I'm at Six Guy Street, and I'm against this. This is four stories high. That would, if I came out of my door and I looked to my right, that's all I would see are these buildings. We're in a single family street. The, at the end of the street, there's duplexes. At the end of that, there's the housing on Bartlett. The school is here. If you go down the street, there's St. Martin's. Now Trinity is, is going to be up for sale. So now St. Martin's will be the church to go to. So we have all those parishioners that are going to be coming down Maple Street. The traffic will be outrageous. I mean, I, I just don't see that kind of development in that neighborhood. You know, it's one thing if they came in and said, well, two stories high. That's not what they said. They said 250 units. That, that's just too much for that neighborhood. And the fire station, that was a great asset for the town. What about a community center for the kids, for the seniors? I go to South Berwick, and uh, you'd see how many people from Summersworth go to South Berwick because they can offer you something. What is Summersworth offering us? They don't have anything for the kids. They don't have anything for the seniors. You have a park right there. That's the perfect location to have a community center. You have the senior center right there with all those apartments right there. And everybody says, what about affordable housing? You have six different units that the city of Summersworth funds for handicapped and seniors. So affordable housing, you already have it. We don't need any more affordable housing. We need something for the people. Thank you. Any further comments by visitors tonight? Any further comments by visitors? Please come forward if you'd like to state your opinions. Any further comments by visitors? Good evening and welcome. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, to you, Mr. Mayor, and to the council, my name is Paul Goodwin. I am a Summersworth resident, but I'm here tonight as the Senior Develop Development Manager at Schoenberg Properties to answer your questions you may have regarding Resolution 54-23 before you this evening. Resolution 54-23 seeks your authorization to allow the City Manager to enter into a purchase sale agreement with Schoenberg for the former National Guard Readiness Center property located on Blackwater Road. Our application is in response to the city-issued RFP, which sought proposals from qualified developers seeking redevelopment of the site for residential and or recreational purposes. Schimberg is excited about the opportunity, with your approval, to advance a housing-based development proposal which retains, the support, retains and supports rec recreational uses on the site. If it pleases the council, tonight's vote is the first step in advancing the project, which would then undergo a robust public process to address the standard considerations for project review and approval, as required by city regulations. Such considerations include review of approved uses, traffic, code requirements, and design. Schimberg has over 30 years of experience in development and has engaged a highly qualified team of experts to work through the design and entitlement process. Schimberg has a long history of working with the city to complete successful projects, including the Great Falls School Apartments in 2001, the Canal Street Mill in 2008, and the Hilltop School Apartments in 2020. We know from experience the transformative power of providing housing and investment to places like Summersworth, and hope to continue our 20 plus year commitment in investing in Summersworth and supporting its community with the National Guard Readiness Center project. This proposed acquisition 
and the related project would provide tremendous public benefits, including retaining the existing baseball field, providing a publicly accessible park at the intersection of Maple Street and Blackwater Road, providing access improving accessibility and parking facilities for the baseball field, providing attractive landscaping and beautification to the site, removing vacant and non-compliant structures, and improving on-site stormwater management and infrastructure. The project would create much needed housing, would return the property to city tax rolls, and would contribute to Summer's Worst continued revitalization. I'm available for your questions this evening. I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Any further comments by visitors this evening? Any further comments by visitors? Again, any further comments by visitors? Yes, I have a comment. Good evening and welcome. Thank you. It's on, so you're good. <laughs> okay. Hello, my name is Andrea Bolvin. I live at 64 Crest yeah. Drive. Um, I am completely against this proposal. Um, I noticed that uh, the representative of Chinberg, there was no discussion at all about a traffic study at all completely just you're talking 500 vehicles probably one tenant at least per apartment most likely two in order to afford the apartment so how are 500 cars going to navigate a very small area which comes into a four-way intersection as we are all aware of at the uh, intersection of Rite Aid and CVS. My great fear is that Summersworth is going to turn into Dover. Anyone who has been on Central Avenue or has tried to navigate Central Avenue, now that they have built these massive structures, you cannot navigate Central Avenue. So it's, it's very upsetting for those of us who love Summersworth to see where we're headed. I know many people in Dover who are extremely upset about what their community has turned into. They don't feel, they feel like they're being displaced and they have grown up there. And this parcel of land should be developed for the community. I recall being young and having to take swimming lessons. We were transported by the Summersworth Recreation Department to Dover to use their pool. There is in the wintertime, it'd be wonderful to have an outdoor skating area. Families could go there. They could gather. I mean, this should be used for the community, for people who live here, who grew up here, who pay property taxes that continue to increase. And as um, uh, another one of our um, neighbors mentioned, what are people getting for their property taxes? We should be enjoying what we have here and not attracting new people to come and live here in apartments. There's been no studies at all in terms of these folks, uh, folks are going to have children. Some of them will. So can our school system handle this? Can our ambulance services handle this? Can our police department handle domestic calls or, or, or other types of calls that may occur? Um, this is a massive, massive development that would, is currently being proposed. Um, it's just, I, I was very concerned in terms of the lack of process. When I saw the meeting last time, how there was an indication or at least an attempt to move this into a sec, like a second reading without any, without having any public comment at all. I mean, where, where is the due process? We live here. We will be impacted by this. There must be process. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments by visitors? Yes. Could you indulge me just for a couple uh, seconds? Yeah, absolutely, sir. I, I want to make an observation. We wait till they get to the mic. That way everyone can. All right. All right. I'll do that. The, uh, I, I just wanted to bring up a point. Uh, uh, when you guys go to do your feasibility study, I want you to take into consideration that some of us have gotten so fed up with High Street that we no longer use it between the hours of seven in the morning till about 10 and from three o'clock in the afternoon till about seven at night. We go, if we have to come from Dover, we go straight down 108 and come down Blackwater Road along with about 60% of all the other traffic. 
So we'll just take that into consideration. I wanted to bring that up because so far with all the development talk so far tonight, nothing still hasn't been mentioned about traffic control. So just to take that into consideration, how some of us don't even use High Street anymore because of those facts. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Any further comments by visitors? Any further comments by visitors? Good evening and welcome. Is it on? Yes, it is. Yeah, you might just have to bend it down a little. My name's Candace Rogers and I live at 19 Crest Drive. Um, it's unimaginable what the traffic is gonna be like on Crest Drive. Right now, it's, it's bad. People fly down the road, People that aren't supposed to be there drive down that road. It's supposed to be, you know, only for residents delivery. That doesn't happen. You see UPS trucks and, you know, prime trucks going right down the street knowing that they're not delivering anything in our neighborhood. Um, I have children. There are a lot of children that ride their bikes and, and just, you know, it's, it's a quiet, nice development that we live in. We moved here four years ago from Germany. We lived in Germany for five years. And when I first got here, I was kind of disappointed. I, I, we had a house in Wakefield before, and that's what I was looking for. But now I've gotten to the point where we've done a lot of work to our house, and if, the, if this goes through, my property value is going to drop like a rock. So before this, if it does go through, I'm putting my house up for sale because I'm not going to be able to get out of there, and I'm not living on a highway. Because right now it's bad enough. It's going to be horrendous. I don't care if they did something, but they, if they blocked off our road, Crest Drive, and didn't let, allow the traffic or just residents in, I don't know how they'll do it, but that's what we need. I mean, it, it's gonna be horrendous. You could have at least 500 cars. If people have two cars in their family, that's 500, that's not 250. I mean, that's an enormous amount of traffic that you're gonna put on that little community that is the pa pass through from High Street to Blackwater. It's just not, to me, it's not feasible just to have some contractor make a ton of money off people. I know we need housing, but I don't think that that's the, the right place to put it. I mean, is there any proposals about traffic or what they're gonna do about Crest Drive or even High Street? I mean, I don't know what we're gonna do. It's, it's just not feasible in my eyes. If he wants to develop, he, you said that there was another spot that he had already talked about, let him do that. But this person that said something on a four-story building, I was appalled when I saw that. Four-story building. And what about the wildlife back there? I hunt. I work for Fish and Game. We have tons of deer back there. We have bobcat back there. We had a bear last year back there. And w where's that going to go? I mean, it's going to make it even worse. They, if they tear all that down and make, I don't know, all the deer are going to come to my house. <laughs> so I just don't think it's feasible. I don't think we need it. it. Like everybody's saying about a community center or, you know, swimming pools. People will come to that, and you'll get your money from that. You know, people will, and my taxes are really high. So they're asking what we get for our taxes. What are we getting? A, mo a big development from some builder that's going to make things worse for us? People don't understand their property values will drop if that goes through and we're living on a, on a highway. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further? Just one additional Absolutely. comment. Um, there is development going on in Summersworth. There are apartments being, apartment buildings being developed downtown Summersworth. So, you know, and I think it's probably over 200, 250 apartments. I mean, we have development going on. There are apartments being built in this city. So to say that, you know, we need this, that's, that's not true. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments by visitors? Any further comments by visitors? Any further comments by visitors? None being so, bring us to agenda item number six, which is the consent calendar. Chair will obtain a motion on the consent calendar. Councilor Vincent. Yes, I, I'm not going to, I'm not, I don't want to make that proposal, but I do have a point of order. Without and objection. I know, I know that we have several correspondents that wrote to us here that I have, 
Is it possible? And I know it's time lengthy, but the clerk could read them because I don't want the people to go without not being heard. I, I had the city manager that was going to report those out as part of his report, if that is acceptable. That's, that's fine with me. Thank you. Okay. We, we had discussed that earlier, and he's going to report those out as part Thank of you very much. Hey, Councilor Vincent, I believe you had a motion on the consent calendar. To accept the consent calendar. Council Vincent moves the consent calendar to be accepted as presented, seconded by Councillor Pepin. The question for the council is on the is on the approval of the consent calendar. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and the consent calendar is adopted. Brings us to agenda item number seven, which is comments by city councilors. Any comments by councilors this evening? Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Anna. I'd like to thank everybody that came out this evening. Uh, to talk about uh, the project, if you're for it or against it. Um, thank you for coming out. It's very important to me as a counselor, and I'm sure it is to these other counselors, to hear what the people would like to see happen. Um, let me just say this, that uh, Chinberg is a very qualified builder. Uh, I'm not putting him down. I just think that the project, there's a place for the project and it's not there. Um, it'll drastically change the landscaping over there. Uh, I've always been uh, for um, the, the recreational side. Um, I know there's been some other views here for this council, but I know myself and a few others have been towards the recreational side. And I just want to say thank you for coming out. I appreciate it. I, I did receive uh, a lot of calls um, about this issue, and none of them were for it. Thank you. Further comments by councillors? Any further comments <coughs> by councillors this evening? Councillor Gibson. I want to second Councillor Vincent's comments. Um, I was on the uh, Finance Committee that forwarded the proposal, and I voted for it to come forward to the Council because I felt that the full Council should review this. Um, my concerns are similar to what have been voiced by the community members. Um, I respect Chinberg, they've done excellent property, but my question comes down to they've owned the Main Street property for a very long time. It's never been developed. If they want to build a massive apartment complex, they have parking available in that area with no problem, um, as well as the ability to build there without the concerns that are being voiced. Um, you know, so that's basically my position on that development. If it goes through, I'll support the action of the council, but I think that you should think long and hard about putting something like this into place. My other comment is um, I respect the work that our boards do, but I'm severely disappointed by the result of the Summersworth Hotel action. Um, I can also say that this applies to the Chinberg proposal. Um, I think it's not a very lovely idea to build a parking lot on Washington Street. <laughs> the city already gave concessions on this project, offered additional parking spaces on Main Street to them. And they presented a proposal with concealed parking under the building. Now they want to move it out. I do not believe a parking lot is in character with the community there. Um, and I'll be honest, I hate parking lots. Um, I've seen developments in other communities where they either mandated or the developers went ahead on their own. and did underground parking or first story parking. And I would have liked to have seen the boards hold them to that original agreement that they made and had approval on. Um, <coughs> and I don't understand how the boards could, for lack of a better word, nitpick other projects about the character and then go ahead with this. This has absolutely no character to it. And 
I know there's nothing that can be done about it at this point, but I just strongly disagree with the actions that were taken. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Further comments by Councillors? Councillor Witham. Just to make sure we're all on the same page, I'll comment on the National Guard property when we get to that particular agenda item where the conversation belongs. This is not an agenda item to talk about the actions taken by the Historic District Commission relative to 85 Elm Street uh, and the Summersworth Hotel property in the parking lot that Councillor Gibson speaks of. Um, the Historic District Commission voted no uh, to not allow that to happen. Um, and uh, it is my belief that that developer of the 85 Elm Street property will walk away from the project in its entirety at this point. So I don't think we have any fears there. What it does raise a question of, though, is, uh, again, uh, the reach of the Historic District Commission, which I think is a very big conversation that this council needs to have. It was brought up during the presentation by the developer at 85 Elm Street uh, about the cost of uh, construction um, which I think we all recognize if you've built even something as simple as a shed or a pair of stairs has gone up significantly. Uh, and a project of that scale with the uh, loans that are necessary, uh, we're all aware of the interest rate hikes that have gone on uh, that have impacted that project as well. So what they were looking to do was to add more residential units to the first floor because of demand. Uh, the more residential units would obviously generate more income, which helps them to pay for their investment. But because they were displacing the underground parking, they needed to find uh, parking adjacent, which was the Summersworth Hotel property, which is an urban blighted property that's perhaps beyond any sort of repair. However, the Historic District Commission, perhaps rightfully, said that the financial portion of that conversation has no place with that board. And I struggle with that. And if we can't massage that into the HDC regulations, perhaps it's a conversation about uh, narrowing down the scope of the HDC, uh, eliminating it, narrowing the span of the HDC. Uh, that conversation gives rise to those conversations. So just uh, for clarity. Thank you. Thank you. Further comments by councillors? Councillor Gerding and then Messier, Councillor Gerding. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I will as well hold off on comments on the National Guard until it uh, is brought up uh, on the agenda. I do appreciate uh, everybody who came out and spoke either in favor or against it tonight. Um, thank you for your comments. I have extensive notes, it's ready to talk about it. Um, but wanted to follow up on the HCC um, vote that took place in regards to the Elm Street project, just uh, <coughs> agree with Councillor Witham. Um, finance is not allowed uh, as part of our decision. I am the member, the council representative who sits on HDC. I've been on it prior to being on council as a regular HDC member, and we are not allowed as, uh, as a part of our vote to consider the financial impacts of the applicant. And so uh, the argument that was presented to the Historic District Commission was that the changes needed to be made in order to allow for the project to be uh, financially feasible. And that argument was not something we were allowed to hear. It was almost as if, like, if you're in a court case, you need to exclude it from the jury and say, strike it from the record. We can't hear that. I'm sorry. Um, however, uh, as a member who voted in line with the decision at the HDC, um, I will uh, say that I think that I wish that the developers had done uh, their due diligence prior to their initial proposal. They worked with us very uh, uh, extensively when they initially uh, were allowed to build uh, the proposed building at Elm Street uh, that, the, that we approved originally. Um, we had multiple uh, uh, essentially like uh, proposals in advance of the, in, the one that we eventually vote, uh, voted on, and I wish that they went through the same process with us for this new proposal. They kind of just showed up with a brand new design, uh, changing out the parking underneath, changing the entire facade of the building, um, and essentially ignoring all of the originally agreed upon uh, historic elements that the HDC required of them. Um, 
uh, for a brand new design that was, uh, looked very, very different from what was approved. Um, had they gone through that same process they went through uh, the first time, there could have been a possibility for uh, some negotiation, uh, to work with them to better understand their needs, uh, but instead they arrived with, you kind of just threw it a proposal on the table, weren't willing to compromise, and then weren't even willing to table the proposal for us to continue working on it, um, which again, like was expressed previously, gives me fears that they might walk away from this. Um, but at minimum, I will commend the HTC for at least following their own rules and by uh, their guidelines for the decision that they made, sticking to the proposal that they initially agreed to with the developers back in, whenever that was, February maybe? Um, and, uh, but I agree, I think uh, I would be happy to work with you, Councilor Witham, on maybe looking at uh, ways that we can adopt or change ordinances or uh, regulations uh, for the HGC to perhaps allow financial considerations, to allow for things like that to maybe be, or allow there to be at least a little bit more wiggle room. Um, so happy to sit down, maybe figure something out. Um, that's all I have to say, thanks. Further comments by Councilors, Councilor Messier. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'll start with the um, project on the Armory site. I, for one, have never been in favor of any project other than the city <clears throat> keeping the property and doing something with the former Armory. We've had consultants tell us that single-family homes were the way that it should go and go, did not go that way. Um, I can't blame the Chimberg company, they responded to an RFQ, put a proposal in, and that seems to be that being fast-tracked because we hear they were the only one. I'm not blaming Mr. Chimberg, he responded to an RFQ. And then if the purchase and sales goes through, then it goes through a lengthy um, site evaluation and things like that. So. I will not be supporting, I haven't supported this from the beginning, and I won't support it tonight. So, other than keeping it, I don't care if it stays the way it is forever. So, um, now we'll go to 85 Elm Street. It seems foolish to me that a board, first of all, I don't think that the historic district ought to be down that end of town. If somebody can explain to me what is, where's the historic value of a parking lot or a profile garage or the old hotel that is rotting away in the back and that, it seems short-sighted where the historical district committee, there were two sane people out of seven, so I, it seems to me that what we're going to have up there is a dilapidated parking lot, profile garage, going to stay the same because the developer is just going to walk away. Because why would he or she, they, want to do this and put up with this foolishness? I mean, we need to look at the big picture. And I don't think that the historical commission did. I hope that the developer appeals its decision and let's hope that we can come to some resolution because other than that, what you see if you drive through there as I did this weekend, there's abandoned refrigerators, there's abandoned buildings, the parking lot is deplorable. Now I'm sure we can send the code enforcement officer and we can try to force them because that's what we love to do. All you can do is look at your packet. That guy, he, he, gets, he does a good job because there's like three pages. So, um, But I'm saddened about 85 Elm Street that that project may be down the highway. I would support, we've had previous people wanting to look at shrinking the historical district, which I support. Um, I've lived here for 65 years. I don't know what the historical significance of a parking lot in that building is. So uh, that's my, so in closing, summary, 
I will not support the development of the armory other than as a community center or something for the city. And I'm saddened about 85 Elm Street. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Further comments by Councillors? Any further comments by Councillors? Councillor Gibson. Just quick, if you, if I misrepresented what I was saying about the boards and apologize to the boards. Um, my concern really was with just the fact that I don't believe in allowing a group to radically change a proposal that drastically changes the impact on the community at large. Thank you. Further comments by councillors? Any further comments by councillors? None being so. Brings us to agenda item number eight, which is communications. We have uh, several emails that are rolled into the city manager's uh, report. Brings us to agenda item nine. Agenda item number nine, which is presentations and petitions. We have none this evening. Brings us to agenda item number 10, which is the mayor's report. Honorable members of the council, I submit to you the mayor's report for Monday, July 10th, 2023. Under nomination appointments and elections, under nomination appointments and elections in accordance with council rule 17 appointments, the following is being brought forward this evening for a confirmation vote. Doug Heberman for appointment as an alternate member to the planning board with a term to expire in June 2026. And this respectfully concludes my July 10th, 2023 mayor's report. And I know all of you are, I knew I was going to get comments on that. Right, right. I have a lot that I will be rolling over into August. Don't worry. I know you are all heartbroken that you're not getting the lengthy mayor's report this evening, but I knew we would have several members of the public and we wanted to be able to hear them and, and afford you time for the debate. So I'll make up in August, trust me. Brings us to agenda item number 11, which is reports of standing committees. We'll start with the chair of the finance committee, Councilor Witham. Thank you, I think. So uh, thank you for the time allotted to me because I have a lot to report on here. So it all comes and goes. Uh, Finance Committee met on June 26th at 5 p.m. here at City Hall. Uh, our first significant agenda item was a discussion of the uh, current lease of the Oaks Golf Course. Uh, as I think most people in the community know, uh, the City of Summersworth owns the property uh, of the Oaks Golf Course. It is operated by the Oaks uh, through a lease agreement. Uh, there, are 28, uh, there are 20 years remaining on a 38-year lease that the city signed uh, back in 2002. Uh, the Oaks Golf Course, again, as I think most people in the community know through various correspondence, is looking to do a number of site improvements uh, over the next uh, five to 10 years. Uh, expansion of uh, dining facilities, the deck, um, virtual golf, covered uh, uh, pavilions for the driving range, uh, a number of course improvements uh, to include some tree removal to enhance the uh, playability of the course, so on and so forth. And it's uh, obvious that uh, those improvements will cost millions of dollars. In order for the Oaks to have a return on that sort of investment in the property, uh, they've done some calculations with their actuaries, uh, and it makes extension of the current lease beyond the 20 years remaining uh, important uh, for the viability of their loans and all of that. I think the committee generally agreed with Mr. Harity, who represented the Oaks, uh, he's the owner, uh, that uh, the Oaks is a, a tremendous asset to the city of Summersworth. The partnership that the city has had with the Oaks uh, to include uh, uh, taxes on some of the site amenities, the lease payments and all of that, uh, and what it brings to the city uh, is extremely valuable. Uh, long and short, the committee is very much in favor of supporting uh, the lease extension to the Oaks Golf Course which would bring it through year 2060. I probably will not be on the council then, just saying. Um, it does uh, include a number of provisions for increases in the uh, lease payment uh, over the years, so that would continue to escalate uh, accordingly uh, over the terms of the lease agreement beyond uh, the current lease agreement. We discussed uh, about how many rounds of golf are played there uh, annually. Uh, it was anticipated when they first opened that they would see 35,000 rounds of golf a year. So that's 35,000 people showing up 
to golf there. Uh, they did not realize that uh, in its entirety uh, until uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, every now and again, you find something positive that came from the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, golf rounds were one of them. Uh, and currently, and since the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, they're showing about 40,000 golf rounds annually at the Oak, so in excess of what they anticipated. Um, in addition, as you know, the, the Oaks host weddings and other functions at the site uh, with the uh, facilities they have there. Um, so long and short, all of this conversation uh, was in support of the, the Finance Committee unanimously endorsing uh, the resolution to the full council uh, to extend that lease agreement through year 2060. Uh, under miscellaneous, we actually had a significant discussion with Mr. Henry Herndon uh, from the Community Power Coalition. Uh, long and short, the Finance Committee supports the city moving forward with the formation of a community power coalition here in Summersworth. Uh, in essence, this provides for greater buying power for city residents and businesses for uh, power. Uh, as you know, on your electric bill, there are two items of the bill. One is the uh, power generation, one is the power distribution. Eversource is the power distribution and for the foreseeable future always will be because they own the infrastructure, the poles and the wires in the community. However, the power distribution can come from any number of different sources. And through the Community Power Coalition, you would have greater buying power as a community because all the residents sort of band together along with other communities that are members of this Community Power Coalition. Uh, currently, there are 33 New Hampshire municipalities at, as part of this Community Power Coalition. Uh, if Summersworth were to join, we'd be obviously community number 34. Uh, what it requires is the formation of a local governance board for the Community Power Coalition uh, that would oversee this. Um, residents and businesses would give, be given the option to opt out of the Community Power Coalition and keep their power purchased through Eversource or somebody else if they so chose. Uh, so it allows a greater deal of flexibility for residents and businesses on an effort to help uh, in saving uh, money. Uh, we had discussion on a number of different aspects to this, uh, all of which will be vetted out through the resolution which the committee, again, unanimously endorses moving forward with. Uh, Next item on our agenda was uh, a change order from GMI Asphalt uh, in the amount of uh, $20,800. So GMI, uh, they actually did a number of projects in the city, road resurfacing being one, but a separate um, scope of work were sidewalk improvements. Uh, if you've driven around the, the city, uh, the sidewalk on West High Street from Cemetery Road to Maple Street was uh, replaced and rebuilt, as well as a sidewalk on uh, Bartlett Avenue, a much smaller section of sidewalk on Bartlett Avenue and a small piece in front of the SAU building. Uh, the change order of $20,800 was to cover additional uh, hot top uh, loam and seed cost largely associated with the section on West High Street. Uh, the project required uh, GMI to go further into residents' driveways because of the chipping out that occurred and the uh, amount of loam and seed needed was in excess of what the city estimated. Uh, so that was that change order. Uh, it was all verified by the city engineer that their excess amounts were in fact in excess of what were bid. Uh, so the finance committee uh, endorse moving forward with a resolution to the full council to support that change order in the amount of $22,300. Uh, last item we discussed was a miscellaneous item regarding the walking trail around Willan Pond. Uh, there are a couple of foot bridges that cross some wetland areas out in that area. Uh, they are pressure treated wood uh, and the uh, pressure treated wood has warped and the fasteners have failed in some areas. So a scope of work needs to be done out there. 
the public work staff have done some temporary repairs and I believe have posted some warning signs because this problem could creep up again. Um, right now we're exploring if that is conservation land and if so can we use conservation funds uh, to make some of those repairs and just hire a contractor to do the work. We know that the public work staff is too thin and too many projects in their bailiwick to handle this. So we're trying to see if we could have a contractor do it uh, through conservation funds that are available. So we'll continue to monitor this. We understand the need for the repairs and we'll, we're looking just for a funding strategy to do that. Uh, that concludes the report of the Finance Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Brings us to Chair of Government Operations, Councillor Mishu. And nothing to report out this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Councillor. Moves us on to Economic Development, Councillor Austin. No report this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Councillor. Brings us to Public Safety, Chair, Councillor Pepin. I have no report this evening. Thank you, Councillor. Brings us to Public Works and the Environment, Chairman, Councillor Witham. Uh, Public Works has not met. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Brings us to Recreation, Councillor Cameron. Thank you. We did have a brief meeting tonight before council, and we had approved our minutes from January, so we hadn't met since then. Um, one of our points of interest was a woman from Rochester who is dying of cancer. It's kind of a sad but gracious donation. She is going to donate a granite bench out to um, Mass Point Dam, where she walks with her dogs, and um, she is very specific about how she wants this done, and w there's a map of where it's going to be placed, so they'll work with um, Kristen and um, Mr. Babinski about the placement of it, but it's a very nice donation, and it's um, sad at the same time, but she has enjoyed it so much out there. That's what she's doing for the city, so that's wonderful. Um, the Home Depot Foundation grant we talked about is a $3,500 grant. We have a little bit of a timeline for our Ash Street Park Butterfly um, Park, and a lot of the money that is going to be donated right now is going to be used for um, basic landscaping. Nothing with the flowers this year. Um, that will come next year, but we're hoping to have a lot of the improvements done by September, and when we do, we might have a ribbon cutting then to at least get it off the ground. And then we talked about the community gardens grant that they got and there'll be some winter programs about gardening and lectures for people on gardening and composting that you'll be able to attend. We also are um, going to be having a new program. It's a 50 plus group, new walking and hiking program and it'll be six walks, two at Willen, two at Mass Point and two downtown to get the seniors out and walking. And if it's a success, which we hope it will be, they'll have one in the spring and one in the fall. Tiny Choppers is open for the fall. You can register online with their new registration program. They say it's working out very well. An update on kids camp. Um, we're in week three right now. Session one had 45 kids and session two has 54. And we would also like to thank Mona Potter. She's been with the rec department for nine years. She's going to be retiring. So thank you for all your work with the recreation department. We appreciate it. Um, the software went live. So 30 out of 32 did it online, and there were no issues of it as of yet. So that's great. And Mally Farm softball fields are being used for two tournaments by Seaco Softball. And that is the end of my report. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor. I guess we do have a brief report on public works and the environment from Councillor Messier. Thank you. Uh, on June 26th at 4 o'clock, the uh, Public Works and Environment Committee met. The meeting started at 4.10. We approved the minutes of April 21st, 23, by a 2 to 0, 1 abstention. Um, we reviewed the... GMI asphalt sidewalk improvement change order. I'm not going to eloquently explain because Councillor Witham did. So, but that was backed by the committee four to zero. Uh, the same, the next uh, item on our agenda was the Oaks Golf Course Management Lease. And uh, 
everything that was said in the Finance Committee. It also passed the Public Works Committee by a 4 to 0 vote. Um, we were updated on project updates on the TAP grant, the light poles at the high school. Uh, since then, the concrete has been poured, the light stanchions are in, waiting for the lights, um, and waiting for that to finish up. Uh, miscellaneous, that was about it, uh, other than the bridge thing at the uh, Will and Pond, which we believe they should, we, we need to do something because those walking trail or that walking trail out around Willen Pond gets considerable use. So, thank you. That's it. Thank you, Councilor. Brings us to agenda item number 12, which is reports of special committees. Any reports of special committees? Councilor Girding. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have a report from the Mayor's Commission on Cultural Ethnicity and the Arts. Uh, we met Wednesday, July 5th here at City Hall. Uh, we had one item on our agenda, which was a discussion of the proposed City Historical Marker Program uh, that came out of the Mayor's office. Um, we got an update uh, on this program. Um, we currently have eight proposals for uh, places where these markers will go, as well as uh, locations associated with them. So I'll just go through those quick. Uh, Central Park, uh, there will be a plaque displayed at Will and Pond entrance. Uh, one for the murder at Great Falls National Bank, which will go outside 45 Market Street Bakery uh, in the sidewalk, um, or the adopt -a spot. Um, Fred Brown, uh, which is going to be a uh, plaque displayed at the Summersworth Historical Museum. Another for Great Falls Manufacturing Company, which will be at the Canal Street uh, entrance, uh, likely on the sidewalk. Um, uh, one for our unique name, Summersworth, uh, which will be here at City Hall. Uh, another for Noble Pines, which will be up uh, by Noble Pines by the playground. Next, the General Electric Building, which will hopefully go by the entrance to Eclara. Um, and then lastly, uh, Citizens Place, which will go right at Citizens Place. Uh, we discussed these uh, eight proposals at length, uh, kind of learned about their cost, um, and discussed that this would be hopefully a program that would grow over time. We were excited for these eight, but hope that we can get more. Uh, I think 10 is the goal to kind of represent our 10 square miles here in Summersworth. Um, we came up with a few potential ideas for future um, ones, including uh, the John Wentworth House, which had been on the list, but we figured we would potentially need to consider uh, the impacts of it being a private residence, so would want that to be vetted a little bit further before we actually go forward with it, but could certainly stand as one in the future if the residents uh, were willing to coordinate with the city on that. Another being uh, Horn Street Cemetery, that was a proposal that came out of the HDC, um, but we were still on the fence as to whether we wanted to bring uh, too much attention to that cemetery, being that it is extremely fragile and uh, not well known, and we didn't know the impacts of putting a sign there on uh, the cemetery itself, because some of those uh, gravestones are certainly very uh, fragile and we want to protect them. Um, but again, stood on our list for potential future projects if uh, the committee decided down the road that it was interested in doing more. Um, after that, um, essentially kind of just discussed those different locations and they, uh, un the committee unanimously agreed to move forward uh, to a full council vote to approve these markers as proposed. And that was it. Thank you, Council. Just to add to your report, if you if you don't mind, oh sure, you know, yeah, short mayor's something. report on this item. Yeah. This is on the agenda this evening. If this is approved by Council, we actually will have ten markers because remember to remind Council, oh, um, true. we do have two state historical markers, which I'm very excited that was approved by the state of New Hampshire. The historical markers that are throughout the state. So Summersworth will now have two of those historical markers. Jenny has updated me that one of them is in. It's at DOT and awaits our, uh, awaits our pickup or delivery. And the, oh, they're both in. Uh, awesome, even better. So they're both in, uh, which is the historical marker that will go out in front of Hilltop School as the first, uh, not the, that's not the current school that was the first uh, high school in New Hampshire, but that was the site of the first high school in the state of New Hampshire that actually started uh, the Public Schools Act, which was named as the Summersworth Act. The second one is in front of um, Forest Glade Cemetery, which is also on the National Historical Registry, along with Hilltop School. Uh, so both of those markers are in. We will wait having those. Uh, I know the uh, Public Works Department is quite busy, so we will wait having those up, and hopefully we'll have some uh, unveilings or dedications uh, maybe come August or so, or maybe 
early September. I know you guys get a busy summer. <laughs> so Thank that's you. just an update. Yeah, no, if council great. does approve this item this evening, we will have, uh, we will have 10 markers. Uh, so that, that's exciting. Any further reports of special committees? Any further reports of special committees? None being so, city manager. Thank you, Your Honor. I offer the following comments that are included in my written report to council for this evening's agenda items. Under unfinished business, ordinance 2423 to amend the chapter 24 of the administrative code city ordinances regarding disposal of city property again. This was supported by the finance committee and the change allows the city manager to dispose of surplus property at a value of up to 5,000. Currently the ordinance states it's only up to 1,000 and quite often we have uh, uh, surplus uh, police cruisers and other types of vehicles and equipment that are under the umbrella of 5,000. I have to go to council for a vote so this would allow me to if another department or the school department didn't need surplus property we could place it out for sale or auction. Under resolutions 5223 is in regards to authorizing the manager to sign an application for a community development block grant to upgrade the parking lot and other um, sundry improvements at the Summersworth Early Learning Center. Again, the Finance Committee voted to recommend the city partnering with the YMCA to apply for the CDBG grant. We did have a public hearing. There are some representatives here if council is inclined to waive rules and will have any questions for them to answer. The next resolution under unfinished business is 5423, and that's in regards to authorizing the city manager to enter into a purchase and sales agreement with the Chimberg Builders to sell the former National Guard Readiness Center on Blackwater Road. Again, a reminder, the Economic Development Committee voted to recommend entering into this PNS agreement to sell the property to Chimberg Builders for 200000 and I did provide you a memorandum prepared by Director Mayors and Planning Technician uh, Crosley regarding issues needing to be considered should council want to move forward and approve this action. Under new business we have resolution 124 regarding authorizing the manager to amend the contract with GMI Asphalt of Belmont, Belmont New Hampshire for sidewalk repair and reconstruction projects and that was uh, reported out by both committee chairs and uh, I did provide you a copy of City Engineer Amber Hall's memorandum and draft change order that was provided to both committees for their discussions at the, the City Council committee level. Resolution 224 is in regards to authorizing the City Manager to enter, execute the Joint Powers Agreement of the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire. Again, um, the, the robust discussion with the Finance Committee and they voted to support this moving forward with this resolution and entering into that agreement. The next resolution 324 is in regards to authorizing the manager to negotiate a lease extension with Hideout Golf to operate and maintain an 18-hole public golf course known as the Oaks Golf Course in the city. Again, this was vetted through the Finance Committee and the Public Works Committee, and this would allow the manager in, to enter into negotiations with the operating uh, principals of the golf course and come back with a draft for the council to review and approve. So. Um, respectfully, should council provide, want to provide any conditions that should be incorporated into the lease extension, uh, please, uh, during our, provide me some uh, emails. We can include the next packet for full discussion. And uh, during the debate, I can hear your, your considerations and direction in regards to what to incorporate into that lease extension should it be approved by the council. I did provide you materials that were provided to the committees that uh, looked over this uh, presentation by Mr. Harrity. And I also provided the council a copy of the current uh, lease with the Oaks. Let's see, um, I'll jump down to a couple of informational items. Under grants, uh, several things are in motion. A few of them were discussed by the Recreation Committee this evening before this council meeting. The Home Depot Foundation grant Again, as in regards to the uh, almost $3,600 received by home, for home Depot, from Home Depot in support of the Ash Street Park Butterfly Garden Project. And as well as the uh, funding, they will provide a team of Home Depot associate volunteers to work on the project. The Community Gardens Grassroots Fund, again, as reported out by the committee chair, is a uh, 
a grant for $1,000, and that would entail bringing guest lecturers to the library or city hall that would provide some lectures on regards to composting or planting and taking care of gardens, whether you're, you're involved in the community gardens that the city has or whether it's your own property. Uh, the Mass Point Dam Bench donation it was reported out by Council, uh, Council Cameron, the committee chair, and the Moose Plate Grant. We did receive, um, we, I did authorize the application of a New Hampshire State Library grant regarding a request for $9,249. There's no city funding match, and if approved, City Council will need to take action to accept that grant. That's in regards to uh, preserving vital city records that are kept by the city clerk's office. So without objection by council, I will move forward to accept the Home Depot, Community Gardens, and Mass Point Dam Park donation. As, so these, the, I'll move forward with the grants and also with the donation. Um, and I guess in closing, I just express my appreciation to all our staff, uh, public works director who was involved in the Home Depot uh, grant and uh, our city clerk's office in regards to the Moose, Place, Moose Plate grant and the mayor's office and the volunteer Jenny Holmes for her diligence in seeking out the community guidance grant. And that would conclude my report, Your Honor. I know you also had several emails you were going to share. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, do you want me to read them or just who they came from? Counselor? I would like you to be able to read their names and if they were for or against the project. Without objection from council, that's how we will share the emails. Without objection. That might be a little difficult to, for me to interpret whether they're for or against, but let me, let me give it a shot. Um, all these emails that were received, the mayor and council has received hard copies prior to this meeting, and we also supplied a hard copy at each of their stations in, in chambers here. So they both received them before the meeting and they received hot copies uh, this evening. One that wasn't received before the meeting was actually not sent to me but to Councillor Nancy Cameron and that was from um, Matthew LeBlanc and he lives on Drew Road and um, he actually voiced, voiced support of new apartment infrastructure in Summersworth and he goes on to cite uh, some of the reasons why he uh, supports it. And <clears throat> while I see people posting a desire for a number of other facilities, and I would also love a rec center, Summersworth is in desperate need for quality housing, and I bel believe Chimberg would deliver this. Please give uh, Chimberg's proposal serious consideration. So I won't read the whole thing, but I might try to encapsulate uh, 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 a, uh, a few sentences that might give you a gist of whether they're for or against. Uh, the next one, in no particular order of importance, but just as they lie on my desk, um, Kathleen Alden uh, writes to the city manager. These are received by me, these next four, I believe it is. Uh, it, it comes to my attention that there is a proposal for consideration to build two four-story apartment buildings at the site of the formal National Guard Armory. I am not in favor of this proposal. Instead, I would like to see the existing buildings be reconfigured for use by the citizens of Summersworth. And she, um, she lists uh, several programs, recreational, uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, using it for tutorial support. Uh, she's unable to attend tonight's meeting, and I wanted to express my opposition to building the apartments. The next one I read is from Andrea Bovin, I believe. Uh, she writes, I live on 64 Crest Drive. I am writing to convey my opposition to the Armory Development Proposal, consisting of two apartment buildings with hundreds of tenants. If each tenant has a car, and most apartments will have more than one tenant, it translates into 200-plus cars flooding the area of Crest Drive, Guy Street, Blackwater Road, all of these being severely impacted. And she notes about Chris Drive as some, some members of the uh, um, neighborhood came up as being a cut through for tenants to reach High Street. The Army is a perfect location for community center, she writes. The next one is um, a repeat. Got two printed out here. Sorry about that. 
Next one is from Martha Kaur, C-O-R-R. I am writing to express, um, let's see, as a 36-year resident of Crest Drive, I am writing to express my concern and dissatisfaction in response to the City of Somersworth and Chickburg Builders' proposal of 250-unit luxury building in place of the National Guard site. I am concerned for the safety of the neighborhood. Many children, elderly and residents alike use Crest Drive and the uh, ancillary streets for walking and pedestrian activities. She notes the increase of 250 uh, plus cars negatively, negatively affecting the safety of individuals. Many streets don't have sidewalks. Um, why not let Chinberg buy property in the downtown area and bring people to the downtown? What is the thought process to use the area for an apartment building rather than a community center or some other form of outdoor activity space? Martha Core. Um, Amy Lockhart, L O C K H A R D T. Hopefully I said that correctly. Uh, she writes, uh, I live on 24 Crest Drive. I'm writing in regards to the proposal, Chinberg's proposal. He does great work, Chinberg, that is. I also understand concerns from neighbors that adding so many apartments will increase traffic on the street. We've been in, at this address for one year and love it because it's quiet and safe for our one-year-old. We know the traffic was an issue in the past. I would hope that the apartment building pa if if the apartment building passes, the city could at least speak with Chinberg about directing the flow of traffic from the apartments to High Street, so t tenants wouldn't be tempted to use Crest as a shortcut. Anyways, that's not my main reason for writing. I love the idea of making the Armory some kind of community area instead, such as Little Indonesia. Uh, thank you for your time. Signed, uh, Amy Lockhart. I think that's it. Was that five? One more? Sorry. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, next one is from, oh, yeah, I got this today, I believe. Uh, Dan and Brenda Heon, 45 Crest Drive. This is the last one. In lieu of us being on vacation at a time, town, please accept this letter as our feedback and opinion relative to the two-story apartment building being considered and possibly voted on this evening. We reside at 45 Crest and have long-standing issues with cut-through, quote-unquote, traffic and speeding cars on our street. Several years ago, it, um, the street was changed from a through street to a one-way street to the volume of cars and the safety of everyone at Crest Drive. Adding 250 units to the Amory site will increase the number and pose additional risks to families. We are strong proponents of reconfiguring that space to the benefit of the entire community, such as a rec site or something of that nature. That's the gist of all the letters. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Brings us to agenda item number 13, which is nomination appointments and elections. Under nomination appointments and elections in accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the following is being brought forward this evening for a confirmation vote. Doug Harabin for appointment as an alternate member of the Planning Board with a term to expire in June 2026. What are the wishes of the Council? Everyone jump at once here. Councilor Austin. I move that the uh, nominee be appointed. Councilor Austin moves that the nominee be so far as confirmed, seconded by Councilor Gibson. Discussion? None being so, all those, in favor of the uh, all those in favor of the confirmation of the nominee, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it and the nominee is so far as confirmed. Brings us to agenda item number 14, which is items which have been placed upon the table. We have no items upon the table this evening. Brings us to agenda item number 15, which is unfinished business. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on ordinance number 2423. Ordinance number 2423, to amend chapter 29, administrative code, section 29.8.5, Disposal of city property. Ordinance number 2423, having been ready first and second time, is open to further amendment. No amendment being offered, the chair will obtain a motion on ordinance number 2423. Councilor Witham. Yes, move for its adoption. Councilor Witham moves the adoption of ordinance number 2423, seconded by Councilor Cameron. Discussion? None being so, if you are in favor of the adoption of ordinance number 2423, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councilor Pepin. Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Austin? Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? Yes. Girding? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. 
Ordinance number 2423 is adopted. <coughs> Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on ordinance number 5223. Resolution number 5223. 52 Resolution 5223. Thank you, Ms. Madam Clerk. <laughs> to authorize the city manager to sign an application for a community development block grant, CDBG, to upgrade the parking lot, install air conditioning, new windows, new playgrounds, upgrade classrooms, and make certain building structure improvements at the Summersworth Early Learning Center. Resolution 5223, having been already first and second time, is open to further amendment. No amendment be it offered, the chair will obtain a motion on Resolution 5223. Council Witham. Move for its adoption. Council Witham moves the adoption of Resolution 5223, seconded by Councilor Messi, or discussion. Councilor Witham. Yes, thank you. Um, at an earlier meeting, I spoke in favor of this uh, proposal, uh, and I do again here tonight. Um, I think as many of us in the community recognize, um, the lack of child care is an issue uh, that uh, not only plagues our community, but uh, I would say the entire state and maybe the entire nation. It's a big problem. Um, what that impacts is the ability for people to work, uh, we have a shortage of workers here in New Hampshire. Uh, we have a shortage of people here in New Hampshire to support the things that we need to do. Uh, so we need to support those people that do currently live here that could be helping, uh, and child care is certainly one of those things. So I certainly support the broad mission of, of child care. Importantly to the property on Bartlett Avenue, um, in recent years it has fallen into, humble opinion, uh, a state of disrepair. Uh, it needs to have some TLC. Uh, and this uh, opportunity uh, presents an opportunity to uh, improve that facility uh, at a number of levels. So uh, it can continue to function as a, a child care facility for the, for the foreseeable future. So uh, this is important on a number of levels, and again, I support that. Question for the council is on the adoption of resolution 5223. Further discussion, city manager. Yeah, I would just note that the City Council, um, there was a first reading uh, back at the last meeting in June, and the full extent of the resolution was read at that time. And uh, the three actions that are involved in the resolution are, one, authorizing the submission of the CDB application, authorizing the man City Manager to sign and submit the application and, and all related forms and documents, and upon approval of the CDBG application, authorizing the manager to execute any documents which may be necessary to effectuate the CDB contract and any amendments. It also, the vote would also adopt the 2000, the 2023 Housing and Community Development Plan. And number three, it also involves adopting the 2023 Summersworth Residential Anti-Displacement Relocation Plan, which was prepared for the purpose of this application. And it also authorizes the city manager to enter into a contract with SRPC of the Stratford Regional Planning Commission for the administration and supervision of this project until it is completed. Thank you, Your Honor. Question for the Council is on the adoption of Resolution 5223. Further discussion? None, be, none being so. If you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 5223, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Austin? Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? Yes. Girding? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Resolution 5223 is adopted. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on Resolution 5423. Resolution number 5423, to authorize the city manager to enter into a purchase and sales agreement with Chinberg Builders to sell the former National Guard Readiness Center located on Blackwater Road. Resolution 5423, having been read a first and second time, is open to further amendment. No amendment be it offered. The chair will obtain a motion on Resolution 5423. Council Girding. I move for its adoption. Council Girding moves that Resolution 5423 be so far as adopted. Seconded by Councilor Austin. Discussion. Council Girding. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have a number of things I want to chat about. Um, I do first want to say I apologize for uh, requesting a second reading on this at the last meeting. Uh, that was essentially just because we had done the same with the previous uh, proposal for the uh, 
old police station and I think I just got excited and ahead of myself and very much apologize. Thank you to the residents for being here tonight. Uh, I am so glad we did not have that because uh, it was extremely important and helpful to hear from you. So really appreciate you all coming in today. Um, second thing I want to touch on is I have a number of questions for uh, the developer and I was hoping I could suspend council rules. Councilor Gerding moves that city council rules be so far as suspended as to allow the developer to answer some, as allow the developer's representative to answer some of the questions. Is there a second? Seconded by Councilor um, Gibson. <laughs> Gibson, thank you. <laughs> Without your hat, Bob, sometimes it just goes blank. Seconded by Councilor Gibson. The question for the council is on suspension of council rules. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The no. 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 Chair is in doubt. Request a roll call. If you are in favor of suspension of council rules, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councilor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. No. Gibson. No. Boston. Yes. Misho. Yes. Witham? Yes. Girding? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? No. Council rules are so far as suspended. <coughs> Council Girding, you are recognized. Mr. Goodwin, good evening and welcome. Good evening. Thank you. Um, so the biggest concern that I heard tonight and from uh, over the past week plus from emails and folks reaching out is in regards to traffic. Um, it is an issue regardless. So um, it seems like a lot of folks have expressed that uh, it's already bad and this is only going to make it worse. So I have a number of questions regarding that. I hope uh, if you don't mind, indulge me in some answers. Um, the first is in regards to the number of cars that will likely be uh, like associated with this property. Uh, we keep hearing 250 apartments, but what are you and Tinberg estimating will be the number of parking spaces that you'll need to accommodate for and how many cars do you estimate will be uh, at that location? Sure, so uh, it is very, I should say the 250 apartment number uh, in the RFP is a, um, an approximate number. I think it was uh, up to 250. Um, we do not have a you know coordinated uh, design, let alone an approval. So um, we did you know some back of the envelope math on what the site could potentially hold. And 250 apartments was the number which we arrived at. So that is uh, a ballpark, be it high end figure for the amount of apartments that could fit on a site of this size in this location. Um, I'm currently showing that uh, 220 units is probably more accurate at a 1.3 parking ratio, which is a ratio which Trimberg has used in the past for similar properties um, and which the planning board and other boards in the city have approved. Um, you are talking about 250, 270 uh, parking spaces, something along um, those lines to get to that 1.3 parking ratio. Um, you know, speaking to maybe to get ahead of some of your questions, hearing the concerns in the room this evening, um, obviously pl very preliminary days. We haven't engaged a traffic consultant um, as part of the uh, site plan review and entitlement process. We would anticipate to have some sort of traffic review and impact city completed. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of Summersworth as well. I um, am familiar with the area. I have ideas around how traffic might be mitigated in the area, um, and I hear those concerns. Um, but uh, I think most of them, if not all of them, are solvable through um, through design and careful thought. Thank you. Um, you did kind of get ahead of some of my questions, which I appreciate, because I was going to ask um, what your process would be to hopefully help mitigate traffic. It sounds like doing a traffic study would absolutely be necessary, especially hearing the number of concerns. I would be requesting that. Um, but going a little further, um, how familiar or how likely is it that Tinberg would be willing to do some sort of offsite improvements, say to, I, first thing that comes to mind is the light at Indigo Hill Road. That intersection alone uh, has been problematic and will be increasingly problematic with the number of uh, individuals parking. Uh, in that site and using that intersection. Um, it's quite close to where the site is and um, I know uh, other times, per perhaps maybe not in this city, but in other cities, developers will do uh, slight changes to the roads, 
traffic, uh, maybe even sidewalks, things like that to help uh, appease the community and allow for easier access for uh, residents to those to the building that you'd be building. Would that intersection be something worth considering and what is the likelihood of Timberg being willing to uh, negotiate with us or at least have conversations about doing offsite improvements? Certainly with a project of this scale, the conversation about offsite improvements is one that we anticipate to have. Um, I can't speak to you know the specifics of, of what that might look like in this scenario and whether or not it would be feasible. Um, I do know as a resident um, that I believe the city has applied for a grant to resignalize the lights on High Street anyways, so I think that light would be addressed through that grant. Today. Oh, good to know. Started today apparently. Great. Um, I guess where I'm going is like, um, I think for me and probably many of the folks here, um, there needs to be some sort of compromise to make this project amenable um, and for it to move forward. Um, and so some sort of offsite improvements, perhaps related to the feasibility study or the parking study, uh, might be something that I would be interested Point in. Point of order, Your Honor. Without objection. I feel like Councilor Girding is like grooming this because he's in favor of it. It, it so with. I mean, we're talking about offsite improvements and we, and we just should have the representative here answering. How can he answer questions that he doesn't know? So you, you're we're talking about, excuse me, Your Honor, but we're talking about dressing this up for the sale. I don't like that. Your, your point of order is well noted. The counselor is within his realm to ask questions just like you are if, if you so desire and recognize his questions are within order and do not breach any protocol. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, counselor, you are still recognized. Further clarification because it seems as if uh, what I'm doing is not clear. What I'm trying to get to here is a way to write into this resolution further restrictions and further things that would allow for compromise within this community to benefit the residents who spoke tonight. I'm trying to come up with a way that we can actually possibly include in the resolution more things that would allow for this project to be amenable. Uh, traffic studies and uh, offsite improvements possibly being one. Um, so Thank we are you. still at the question phase, Councillor. You are recognized to continue to ask Mr. Goodwin some questions. I will yield my questions for now. Thank you. Further questions to Mr. Goodwin? Councillor Witham. Thank you. I guess a couple of questions uh, that you could answer for me. Uh, <laughs> this project, if voted on by the Council tonight, this resolution if voted on by the Council tonight, to authorize uh, the city manager to move forward with a purchase and sale. I would gather that that would be contingent upon a couple of things anyways. One, uh, the property being rezoned because this project could not happen there with the current zoning. Is that an accurate piece of the purchase and sales that it would be contingent upon that? Correct. The RFP uh, envisioned either a residential or recreational use, and the current zoning does not support residential use at all, I Correct. believe. And just as a matter of fact, not a question, but to follow up on that, uh, that zoning change would be made by the city council. Uh, it, it, so the, the zoning change, which would, this purchase and sale would be contingent upon, would be contingent upon the city council voting on a zoning change uh, for this particular project. Secondly, um, this project, if it were to move forward, would also require site plan approval by the planning board. So I'm gathering that perhaps that would be a condition of the purchase and sale as well, that you would be granted site plan approval by the planning board. Correct. And site plan regulations in the city require uh, a traffic analysis. Uh, depending upon the scope of the project, a minor or a major uh, traffic impact study. I'm gathering that this is probably of a size that would require a major traffic impact study um, and would also require uh, a study of impacts to city services, uh, not the least of which would be school impacts, uh, impacts to water and wastewater and those sorts of things. So just in terms of the process here tonight, if we were to move forward with a purchase and sale, that would be contingent upon layers of other activity and vetting 
around many of the issues that the residents raised here tonight uh, that arguably would take many, many months. So I just throw that out there. Thank you. Further questions to Mr. Goodwin? Councilor Vincent. No? No, not for Mr. Goodwin. Further questions to Mr. Goodwin, now that he is at the podium? Paul, thank you. Question for the Council is on the adoption of Resolution 40, 5423. Further discussion, Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. The last I knew, I thought it would go through the ZBA, and then that recommendation would be passed on to the City Council, if I'm wrong. Am I right? City Manager. I don't believe, I don't see the reason why it would go to the ZBA unless he was requesting a variance from zoning. But it, in, in, but in turn, wouldn't that be requesting a, a, a variance for zoning? They're talking about rezoning. Right. And, and there's several possibilities that were included in the memorandum from the planning office. Okay. On how the, the council may, may move forward and consider different ways of rezoning or creating some sort of overlay district. Thank you. I have all due respect for counsel with them, but I guess what I would say for is why waste the time of the applicant when we can already see that the full neighborhood over there is in disapproval of this project, along with a few other people who sent in emails. Uh, it doesn't change the fact that there's going to be a four-story building there or something smaller. Uh, it's, I don't feel it's the, the actually areas or neighborhoods liking. We had a project come before us downtown, which was, the, which was the old Bretton's Cleaners. And we had less people here show up for the Bretton's Cleaners that changed our minds. I just don't want to lose sight of what's going on here. This is a big project. We're not talking about a two-story, uh, four-unit building. We're talking about several stories and several apartments of congestion. I just don't want the council to lose a sight of that. Um, here we have people who have lived here in the city for years that are giving disapproval. It's not just the traffic. Like, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm sympathetic to the traffic because traffic is what really affects us every day. But what it is is the view and the sight of what you see when you come into that area. Putting this huge building in a residential neighborhood, in my opinion, doesn't fit. You know, uh, I live down the street. But you know what? It really doesn't affect me because I'm out in the woods there on Blackwater Road off of Vincent Way here, and I, it really doesn't affect me. But I have compassion, and I think of the people who have to come out their door every single day. So think as a counselor, you coming out of your door every day and having to see this giant building there with people, and it brings kids. I'm sure there's going to be a kid play area. There's a lot of variables here. I think we should just slow the train down and look at what's going on here. And um, I can move to table, but I'll wait. Thank Qu you. Question over the council is on the adoption of resolution 5423 for a discussion. Councilor Gibson and then with him. Councilor Gibson. I'm gonna basically second Councilor Vincent's comments. Um, I do not like the idea of a massive structure like this being put into a predominantly single-family <coughs> residential neighborhood. Um, and as I stated before, I dislike huge parking lots, which is what you're also going to have. You're talking 200 and some odd cars, and using the 1.3, it comes out to 286 cars. I'm sorry, 1.3 cars being parked there. They were also talking about commercial spaces, which would add additional vehicles to the lot. And as the residents of the community there stated, um, they have severe concerns that would be even worse with a higher level of traffic going through that area. Um, I just don't like this the way it's being presented. Thank you. Question for the council is on the adoption of resolution 5423. Further discussion. Councilor Witham. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'm not sure how I'm going to vote tonight. I want to hear from other councilors. So uh, for some to suggest that I am in support of this at this moment it would be 
disingenuous. Um, I asked the questions about the process because at least a couple of residents in their comments tonight talked about the due process. And I wanted to be very clear that there is a due process to the process. Uh, again, just trying to listen to the concerns. A bit of the history here uh, as to how we arrived even here tonight. Um, then a little bit about my history and the property. Um, some time ago, the state of New Hampshire, through the National Guard, said, you know what? We don't need the National Guard Readiness Center anymore on Blackwater Road. If you travel across the state, uh, you'll see that uh, the state of New Hampshire has consolidated many of its National Guard properties into more uh, regional centers, uh, as is the case here, uh, with the National Guard being regionalized to their facility on Brock Street in Rochester. According to state law, whenever a National Guard readiness center, and I don't know how many there are across the state, many, uh, are uh, discontinued, abandoned, use the word that you want, uh, that property uh, becomes the property of the community in which it is in. Hence, we were given this gift. And I said at the time when we were given this gift, I'm not sure I want it or not, but we have it, right? Uh, so, I'm, again, I'm still not sure if this is a good thing or not. Um, I, I remain questionable about that. And I said upon the gift being received by the city uh, that I had a number of concerns with it. Um, not the least of which were site contamination, um, the building itself, and ultimately the disposition of the buildings or properties, because I knew it would be a contentious and difficult conversation. Uh, guess what? That's all coming true. Um, to help in the process, I said, well, I don't like this, but let me try to help with it. Uh, I reached out to the mayor and I said, why don't we form a commission to look at potential reuses of the National Guard Readiness Center. And I said, if you want, I'll chair that commission. So I did. The, through the help of the city manager's office and other city staff, uh, we were able to, through some grant opportunities, engage the services of the Stratford Regional Planning Commission, uh, who engaged the services of a consulting firm uh, to look at potential reuses of the property. And there were three basic reuses that were uh, identified by Stratford Regional Planning Commission and its consultants. One was residential. Uh, I will say that it wasn't a residential uh, opportunity like is in front of us here tonight, but was rather uh, subdividing that parcel into a number of single family home lots. If the number serves me correctly, I think it was nine. Uh, and maybe a few townhomes on the backside uh, that abut uh, what used to be St. Lawrence Park, now discontinued. It's not a park anymore. It's the city's solid waste Superfund site, right? So can't be on there, right? Um, the other opportunity that they looked at was more of a commercial opportunity, um, and they theorized what that could be. Uh, and they used as an example uh, putting a brewery in the building, having a restaurant, maybe some outdoor facilities for, for dining. And then lastly, uh, the other opportunity they looked at was keeping it in the city's control and utilizing it as a community center, as, as many have uh, brought up here uh, tonight. The city in, looked at all of those. Stratford Regional Planning did a very rough cost estimate of uh, return on any of those options. Uh, the option that was financially the most feasible for the city was the sale of all of those properties as single family home lots, uh, maybe some townhomes. Uh, you get the sale of the property and then uh, the ongoing tax revenue from that. That was financially the best one for the city, financially. Uh, the least financially advantageous of all of these, obviously, is the community center. Uh, but we wanted to kind of have an idea as to what that might be, so uh, city staff did do an examination of, of that. Um, it was estimated that 
uh, we'd need to spend uh, upwards of a million dollars, maybe as much as $3 million to rehab that facility for a recreation or community type center. Uh, and then on top of that would be the annual operating expenses, heat, fuel, lights, all of that, and more importantly, staffing, because we don't currently have any recreation staff to staff it. So we'd have to hire personnel to, to do that. So that would be an annual operating expense. And somewhere in the middle was that business enterprise, again, the, a brewery type of thing. So we looked at it from a financial perspective, and then we also looked at it from a zoning perspective. Currently, uh, the National Guard site is zoned recreation. Um, so keeping it as a community center requires no rezoning. The surrounding and abutting properties are zoned R1, residential, uh, as was indicated by many of the residents here tonight. That's the look and feel of the area. So if you were to rezone it, perhaps the easiest rezoning would be to an R1 residential zone because that's exactly what abuts the area. It would blend in, if you will. And then uh, a more difficult rezoning question would be the business opportunity, uh, again, using a brewery as an example. So that all got brought in front of council. Uh, it was uh, uh, churned around and I don't remember the vote, but I think a third of the council at the time liked the idea of a community center, a third of the council liked the idea of uh, uh, the residential option, and a third of the council perhaps thought, well, what else is out there? And that's exactly where the conversation went. All those three ideas got put on a shelf. I won't say thrown out, but they were put on a shelf. And this idea of a request for uh, proposals, or an RFQ, request for qualifications, uh, came up to see what else might be out there as an opportunity other than the three options that the Stratford Regional Planning Commission uh, had. As has been said, uh, the Chinberg uh, company is the only company that responded to that request for proposals with the proposal that is in front of us here tonight. That's the story as to how we got here with the current project. Sorry to take so much time, but this is an important matter and <coughs> the details matter. By way of history, uh, lifelong Summersworth resident, grew up on the corner of Laurier and High. Uh, I could throw a baseball from my home on the corner of Laurier and High and hit Drew Road and maybe in a good day, maybe even then Pinecrest Drive, right? Now Crest Drive. I could certainly hit it that far. Um, in 1979, I was 13 years old. Go ahead and do the math. You can figure it out, right? Uh, in 1979, I was 13 years old and took over as the field maintainer for the Summersworth Little League. Uh, so once a day, I would ride my bike over to the Little League ball field, which is still there today. Um, and stripe and prepare the field for games. Uh, it looked a lot different than it does now. Uh, and uh, once or twice a week would cut the grass at the ball field and outside of the ball field, starting with the mower that used to be kept in the Summersworth fire station. I would go and shyly knock on the door and they'd let me in and they'd open an overhead door and I'd get on the tractor and I'd go over there and mow and then I'd bring it back. But uh, I quickly realized that that became problematic because sometimes they weren't there to get the tractor or to put it away. So ultimately, uh, my dad, who was a cop here in town, uh, said, keep it at the house and just drive it over there. So I drove it up High Street and down Drew Road and across Blackwater Road and drove it over there. I wouldn't do that today. I think it's a bit more traffic, as has been indicated, right? Uh, and did that uh, up until about 2012. So if I did the math, about 33 years uh, I went to the Summersworth Little League field and did field maintenance or umpired baseball games or did whatever needed to be done over there uh, as necessary. But in 2012, I left there and went up to the Pines because my son turned 13 and uh, I was following his journey playing baseball and that's where he went when he turned 13. So not that I had any disrespect for Little League, I just had to go up to the Pines because that field needed some love. Uh, and I continue to love that field today. It's my adopt a spot. My wife say most people adopt traffic islands. I says those are boring. 
I'll adopt a ball field that's much more exciting. So, uh, so I have been uh, away from the, the, the Little League complex for the last, I don't know, 11 years or so and, and putting my efforts in up at the Pines um, uh, every week, every day uh, to help out with that. Why do I share that? Because I have a history with the property. I know the property. Somewhere along this process of the RFP for the project that's in front of us tonight, there was concern about the loss of the Little League ball field. So by way of history, the Little League ball field always sat on the National Guard property. It's never been owned by the city. It's never been on city-owned land. It's been on land owned by the National Guard. I remember one time some general kind of guy with all the stuff on his uniform came over to me when I was umpiring a game and said, hey, you're going to get all the players off the field, and they landed a helicopter. A bunch of people got out with helmets and guns and jumped the fence, and the helicopter took off, and he said, you can play get baseball again. So <laughs> uh, just an interesting story. And I will tell you that for all of those 33 years that I was involved at the Summersworth Little League, there was always, always a concern by the board of directors at the time, and there were many presidents over those years, maybe a dozen, what if the National Guard said, we want that land to expand our facility? And one of their last expansions, they actually put up this like 12 foot fence with barbed wire at the top and it follows the outfield of the Little League. I mean, they, they came as close as they could, but they never took it. Uh, so thank you, New Hampshire National Guard for doing that. So the one thing that happened when the city took ownership of this property, whether we wanted it or not, we own it, uh, was we now own the Little League field. So I said, we need to provide clarity for this RFP that goes out. Is it going to take over the Little League field or not? And if it is going to take over the Little League field, you need to have a plan to replace it. And we sought out Millennium Park as the most logical place to uh, put that field. Maybe a quarter million, half million dollar investment into Millennium Park to improve facilities there because you would want to recreate everything that's currently on the Little League field site. Um, I was fine with either option, even having invested all that time, as long as the Little League had a firm place to keep its operation going. This proposal does not touch the Little League field. It, it stays away from it and perhaps might even enhance it from the perspective of uh, parking and site amenities and things of that nature. The issue of traffic was brought up tonight. Again, I do have belief that uh, traffic studies and those sorts of things would help to better identify how that would be. But it is a question, right? Because the traffic study might, in fact, say, yes, there's going to be an increase in traffic on Crest Drive, I suspect. Right? Um, and how would you control that? I don't know, right? Um, it's nice to say they wouldn't be allowed to go up that street, but how do you police that, right? It's kind of an odd thing to do. I do think one of the issues that we have with traffic right now, notwithstanding this project, because several people have mentioned the traffic on High Street is problematic today, right? Um, Councilor Girding mentioned the CMAC grant congestion mitigation air quality grant that the city received, I don't know, a bazillion years ago. It takes forever to get these grants moving, uh, but is for upgrades to the signals from Blackwater and High all the way to the Dover line. Right now, those signals are in poor condition. They're what I'll call dumb signals. Uh, most of the sensors have failed. They are on timers. So you could be driving up High Street and have to stop even though there's not a car on the other street coming out. Stackpole Road is a good example because it's simply on a timer, right? Or the light at Demoulis that the turn lane activates even though there's not a car there. It's because it's on a timer. So this will put sensors and, uh, and it also links all the lights together so your chances of getting a green all the way through are improved. It's not 100% guarantee, but um, this is an expensive project. It's a million dollars worth of signal upgrades uh, through that corridor. And again, work started today. I saw our uh, staff out there uh, starting to work on that. So as the city councilor, why did I approve this grant? Again, a bazillion years ago, because I think it's going to help with traffic flow on High Street. 
How much? I don't know. I guess we'll find out when the project's done. Uh, I can't wait, right? Because I'm one of those impatient drivers that uh, seems to hit every red light going up High Street. I, I swear there's people watching me and they, they do that on purpose. Four-story structure, it's a big structure. And it's going to have an impact. I, get, I hear that. I think there will be traffic impacts. I do hear that. Um, members of this council know that I was a supporter of the residential plan development. Uh, I think it fits in there the best. Um, having been involved in baseball, youth soccer, hockey, I, I don't know, you name a sport, I, I'm certainly an advocate for recreation. And I love the idea of a community center. I do. Um, I'm just not sure how the city affords that. I don't know how we afford that. It's difficult to do. Um, and that's coming from one of the councilors that uh, perhaps has less to say about the city budget than other councilors here, right? Um, it's never easy, but it's hard to spend taxpayer money on something that uh, someone said it tonight. Uh, I do wonder if it would get used. And that comes from my my current job, I travel all over the state. I work with municipalities across the state on a daily basis. And there are a number of municipalities with community centers. And more of them than not sit vacant and underutilized. There are some. City of Concord, that facility gets heavily utilized. Uh, I might point to the McConnell Center in Dover, if you want to consider that a community center. That gets a lot of utilization. But many do not see that type of utilization. We wouldn't know it till we did it, but I would hate to invest millions, invest in staff, and not have anybody show up there. So that's my concern with the community center. I just don't know for the investment if it would get utilized. It's an unknown. Again, I'm generally supportive of the idea of the single family residential because I think it fits there. In terms of aesthetics, I uh, remind council that we've approved a large solar field on the what was once St. Lawrence Park, right, uh, the Superfund site. So there are some residents on Blackwater Road when they wake up in the morning and put up their curtain, they are going to look out at a solar field, right? So maybe we've already erred in our ways there. I don't know. So, yeah, I don't know how I'm going to vote, but I'm at least sharing some of my background, Relax. which was perhaps a whole lot more than any of you wanted to hear. Apologies. Question for the council is on the adoption of resolution 5423. Chair recognizes Councillor Mr. Inpa I'm sorry, Councillor Vincent. <laughs> thank you, Your Honor. Relax, buddy. And Relax. thank you for that wonderful trip down hit memory lane. We appreciate that because I think that type of description is what we needed for everybody to understand and be come up to the where we are now. One thing you forgot, though, Councillor, was this: is that the revenue part of if we put a pool. A skating rink enclosed and not enclosed there is some type of revenue there now look if you decide to do rec there you don't have to do these things all in a year these projects can be dressed stretched out five sometimes ten years if you look back at the skating rink that is now enclosed on Henry Law Avenue I'm sorry I apologize on Portland on, on Route 4 over on uh, Dover um, that project started with just a cover over it. I don't even think it had sides. And then they went to uh, top sides, and then, they, th then businesses came along and funded for permanent sides, and it, they added it on until they are to here, they, where they are right now today. Another thing that I don't like about um, kicking the putting off or, or going forward with this and not killing it right away is that I'm a businessman here and I don't think that and, I, and if I'm mistaken please say so but I don't see any other business people on this council and if you approve this tonight what you do is with all due respect to all of us here but Chinberg there's money involved there Chinberg is going to come up with plans they're going to have attorneys they're going to spend money and giving these people, like, the so-called green light and then killing the proposal down the road is not right. It's ludicrous because somebody's going to spend money. That's how I think as a business person. So if there's going to be money spent, 
to say no in the end? Don't like that. That's my comments. Question for the council is on the adoption resolution 5423. Further discussion, Councillor Girding and then Pepin. Just a side note, I'm not entering, and then we'll go to Gibson. I'm not entering into the debate because you know I share my opinions generally only during the mayor's report. But I am adding the city does have a skating ring. And uh, just, just for a note into the debate, a very successful one that is run by the Lions Club. So just note as you note into the debate, we do have a skating ring. It is a very successful one and heavily used one. Further discussion, Councilor Girding, Pepin, and then Gibson. Thank you. Um, I think it's important to provide my own uh, explanation for how I feel on the project. Um, I do not appreciate having words put in my mouth about uh, my reasoning. And I do not think that I would ever make a decision for this community uh, for the interest of one single developer. I would n absolutely never do that, and I want to make sure that that is clear. Um, I make decisions because of the people of this community. I care very, very much about this community. And I really, really spend a lot of time thinking deeply, listening, and making sure that I do my very best to make the best decision for everybody. Um, with that said, uh, I want to give reasoning to the decisions that I've come up with, uh, as well as uh, air some light to how I'm feeling after listening to debate tonight from this council and from folks uh, who came and spoke. Uh, yes, I was and I think still am in favor of this project. Um, and my reasoning is that I feel as if Summersworth, as well as the state of New Hampshire as a whole, is lacking housing, and we as a community could absolutely benefit from new residents moving into this community. Uh, here's why. Our downtown is looking for more people to go to it. We do not have a thriving downtown. I spoke with multiple um, business owners just in this past couple weeks. Uh, I know we all have. We are constantly talking with folks from our, uh, who uh, operate businesses in our downtown. They are desperate for more people. Having more folks living in this community, in apartments, would absolutely add to the number of people that would hopefully uh, go and spend their money at our downtown businesses. Um, I think it could benefit the community as a whole. Economic vitality is important. We want to make sure that this community thrives. Uh, there are a lot of businesses that do well in Summersworth, uh, but those businesses are on um, High Street and 108, and I would love to see us start to draw people more and more to our downtown. Other projects certainly could do that better. I will not disagree. Um, I think that this project is larger than I would like it to be. Um, like was said earlier, I sat on um, the National Guard Reuse Committee with uh, Councillor Witham and Councillor uh, Mishu. And we, as a committee, uh, discussed having it be single family housing. And that was, like was stated, uh, my preference as well. Um, but again, I've thought a lot about it. I've tried to balance and weigh out these concerns and think that the number of hurdles that this project still would need to go through at this point to get approval would allow for it to be whittled down to something that is better for our community than as currently discussed. Uh, there's discussion about going through planning. Uh, we have to get zoning approved if, if that even happens. Um, traffic safety and all the site plan regulations need to be followed. Those things can help craft a proposal that fits better for that location. Again, I understand it's a, it's a big project, it's concerning, uh, and I trust the individuals on those boards to help make sure that, that project works. Again, I am just one counselor. I cannot go, uh, or I cannot, for, for very obvious reasons, cannot go and tell planning board what to do. Uh, they are their own independent board, 
and they make their decisions for the best interests of the community as well as a board. And I hope that the folks that are here tonight, if this project is approved, that you continue to advocate for your feelings and your thoughts and what you know uh, fits the neighborhood. And you continue, if again, I'm not saying that it is going to be approved, but if it does, please go to planning board and let them know the exact same things that you let us know tonight, because those are absolutely important for them to hear as well. Um, other reasons I am in support of this. Uh, it was discussed the alternative projects I ideas. We've heard about the community center. Um, I went back and I looked at the notes after Councillor Witham gave that uh, very important history, so thank you. Um, I looked at the notes for uh, uh, the draft proposal for the various projects that we received from Stratford County. It was a $3 million uh, initial estimated cost back in, what, a year or two ago, which could probably now be 4 or $5 million to just get that community center ready to open. Um, that's an expensive project. Um, we would likely have to bond for that. Uh, we do 20 year bond, something of the sort. Uh, and bonds like that typically increase our tax rate of, I think we did a $3 million bond that was what, 10 cents on the, the tax rate. So that would be a 10 cent tax rate increase. That's a lot. We would also then need to have annual operating costs, which I think we could estimate would be, depending on the number of staff that would work there, uh, if it was about five staff members, I think that that would be about half a million dollars every year to operate that. Uh, if it was more than that, it could be a million dollars every year. Those figures just alone would increase the tax rate between 50 cents and a dollar every year. Every year, not just for the life of a bond, but for as long as we operated that. That's really expensive. And again, that is another reason why I have a really hard time justifying a community center that we are unsure will actually be utilized as much as I want it. I'm a teacher. I want my students to have places to go and have things to do. But I also am a city councilor who has to look at how expensive it is to live in Summersworth and how much your tax rates are. I pay those tax rates too. It is hard. I get it. And so having an expensive, beautiful, I'm sure, but expensive community center is something that I am not willing right now to justify spending on or spending our money on. And so then I look at the alternative, which is if we sell it and we have something that's there that's generating tax revenue, what does that look like for our community? And so again, a project like this, this is a big project, and it would likely probably down the road after their tax, uh, the, again, the, the tax rebate that they are requesting, it would likely be probably around, I don't know, $10 million potentially, if it's as big as they're proposing, um, which would generate about a quarter million dollars of revenue for the city every year. So that's the other side of things, which would decrease the tax rate by 20 cents every year, as opposed to increasing it. So that is, that's important. Now, I, I certainly see that there are other impacts on the community, police, schools, fire, things like that, water, sewer, absolutely. There are other costs that then probably get eaten away at that revenue that we would see. But again, there are ways to ensure that this project comes out beneficial for the community through a variety of means, through the variety of boards that this project would need to go through before it even is, the, like, before they even break ground, that I would hope that this would come out to benefit us. Because I do not want to do a project that does not benefit this community. That is absolutely not my goal. Um, with that being said, I would be ignorant if, to not listen to the folks that came tonight. And again, the number of pe people, I think every single one, talked about traffic. And so I am absolutely willing to try to uh, offset uh, costs onto the developer to be able to mitigate and ensure that traffic is uh, better or improved or at least um, paid attention to through the uh, process of this. And I'm willing to put forward a amendment to the resolution tonight that does exactly that. I don't know if it's too late to do that. Um, but I certainly would love to 
uh, have something in writing in this resolution that ensures that uh, costs related to uh, anything that's determined from some sort of traffic or uh, street feasibility study is uh, something as a cost that is incurred by the developer and not by the city. Um, certainly there are other concerns. Zoning is um, a big one. That's something that we'd have to tackle after we approve this tonight. Um, I would love more feedback on that. Um, let me make sure I'm hitting all the things I wrote down from what I heard. I think I did. Um, but yes, again, I just really wanted to make clear why I'm feeling the way that I did. I think it's fair to folks who are watching, fair to the folks that are here, to hear those reasons. I'm sorry that they may or may not be um, in line with exactly what you were hoping. But I want to at least be willing to work with you and figure out some way that if this project moves forward that it can benefit your neighborhood because I absolutely hear your concerns. <laughs> Thank you. Question for the council is on the adoption of resolution 5423. Further discussion, Councillor Pepin, Gibson, and then Witham. Councillor Pepin. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I, I'd like to thank the people for coming out because of my initial thoughts was I was going to vote for this proposal, and I don't think I will be tonight. Um, one of my reasonings for voting for it is I, I do understand that I wanted you people to come and express your opinion because that is very important. We work for you. I mean, you're the ones that elect us here to st sit here. Uh, but it does get frustrating as a city council. It seems like every time that we put out an RFP <coughs> for any type of property that we have, um, it always gets defeated. There's always a group, uh, Domino's Pizza gets defeated. We try to do a project on Elm Street, it gets defeated by, by a committee. So it seems like whenever we try to plan to make our community a little bit better, there's always a group of people that come in and, and, and kind of like put the squash to it. Uh, it's, it's gotten to the point that I feel that there's, there's no growth in Summersworth. You look at the other communities and they do have growth. Um, and, and I'm old fashioned, I come back here, I, I remember the city of Somerset before urban renewal, and we threw all the people out of, out, out of our downtown, and that still bothers me to this day. My wife lost her house that was sitting here just, just a little ways down the street because of urban renewal. So it, it kind of hurts, and, and it kind of hurts when you have people come up and say that we don't take part or we don't take an interest, so like Councilman Witham, went through the details of how much thought went behind this thing and how much we are trying to, to, to grow our city and, and whatever. The reasoning why I'm really having a problem with this is that I think it is too big for the neighborhood. I would like to see some type of single residential, almost what the proposal was from, uh, from the other proposal. I don't know how profitable this would be for Schimberg to go for single residential. I think they would possibly not even want to look at it because they, they, their investment is whatever. And if that's the case, that's the case. That's the reason why I won't be voting for it tonight. Um, but I, I don't want this to be something like the police station. Uh, I mean, we've sat on that since 2008. I, I would like to see something just be developed that one. Don't want to see a building totally neglected in a roundabout way and sitting there and end up becoming an eyesore in a roundabout way. Um, I do have very, very concerns whoever takes over that property and one reason why I was forcing Briggs taking this is that they take the responsibility for any hazardous materials found onto the thing. That is very costly. Found that out being on the, on the building committee for the fire station. We got all the tests back and say all the lands, all the, the, the soil is good and this and that. And then all of a sudden the state finds something new and we got so contaminated soil that's over a million dollars that we got to figure out how to get rid of, and we have no funding. I sit here during the budget and I look at the school department coming to us and they need this, they need that, they need this. Our rec departments are basically the same way. We're always looking to try to improve our rec departments and we're always looking for donations or whatever. It's very, very hard to take care of what, we, what we're operating with right now and still keep it feasible for the taxpayer. If we don't have people in this community paying taxes, we don't have anything. So um, I'm on a fixed income, so I look at my tax bill a little bit differently than someone that's probably got a good, good job. So um, 
customer with him, you wanted to see my feelings or well, my feelings, uh, I think the project is a little bit too big. Originally, I'll tell you right outright, I was in favor of this, and it was probably because of spite that I'm tired of us failing of putting any type of project. I am tired of, uh, I, I'm almost at the point that I don't think we'll have any contractors bid on anything in this community simply because we don't follow through with their RFPs. So why should they apply to an RFP that the City of Somerset puts out if we don't approve anything? So I'm a little fearful of that also because there's a lot of good projects that could be done in this community that benefit every citizen in, this, in the city. Thank you. Question for the Council is on the adoption of Resolution 5423. Further discussion, Councilor Gibson and then with him, Councilor Gibson. Build it and they will come. That seems to be what several of the council members are inferring. Um, there is no guarantee that whatever population moves into this building will enhance the downtown by actively participating in the retail environment. Um, One of the problems we have with our downtown is it's totally constricted by what borders the main accesses to the downtown. You have Washington Street, you have the mill, and, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. There's a very limited area to the downtown to try to draw businesses in. The this I have to agree with Councillor Pepin. I think the project is too big um, for a number of reasons, but I, I won't go there. One of the things that everybody was saying, well, we can't do a community center, we can't afford it. We had a presentation done here a couple of meetings back about the need for upgrading of the library. And in talking to a professional builder about it, we kind of came to the opinion that it would be a better option to build a new library. Um, because it's going to happen sooner or later. Because the library is an antiqu sorry. <laughs> antiquated structure. Um, and just as an aside, talking about the uh, solar, that's something that's very easily screened from public eye. Um, some very inexpensive plantings, and nobody's going to even see that it's there. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what's the right answer here, but I guess that's what everybody on this council will have to decide for themselves how they vote. Um, that's it. Question for the council is on the adoption of resolution 5423. Further discussion. Council, with if I could just ask you to hold, I haven't had Councilor Cameron chime in yet, so you may. we'll recognize, uh, without objection, I'll recognize Councilor Cameron and then you for a second time. Looks like we get several diving in now, so we will get to you. Councilor Cameron. Thank you. When this project originally came up, one of my passions was the Little League field, because I too have spent many times and many a day there working on the field myself. <laughs> being a past president, so I was very concerned about preserving the Little League field. So the interest there was with Mr. Chinberg because I know what he's done through the city and what he's capable of. After listening to you folks, and I'm very glad that you came out, so I appreciate that and your input, the traffic concern is a very real concern over there. I too am kind of leaning toward that I think the project is too big for there. Maybe if it were toned back a little somehow, maybe two-story, maybe, you know, something like that, less um, 
The impact on the people, the probability moving in with kids and that type of thing, the demographics are going down. A lot of millenniums are not having children, and I've brought this up before. So the impact on the schools may be minimal. Um, that may have a factor in it. Um, it shouldn't weigh heavily on it, but those are just some of the things I was thinking about. I am very concerned about the ball field, so I, I do want that to stay intact. I, I think it's kind of a historical marker at this point because it's been around so long. Um, and I, I guess I'm kind of teetering on where to go here. I, I guess if we did say yes, like everybody else has said, there's a lot of boards that's got to go through. There's a lot more that has to be done, a lot more research. And maybe Mr. Timber could come back with a smaller version. That would satisfy everybody. So that's kind of where I'm at. Thank you. Question for the council is on the adoption resolution 5423. Councillor Austin, Mishu, and then with him. Councillor Austin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm going to piggyback on Councillor Cameron's last comment there that um, I, I think it's important for we have all we've all heard all of you we've all heard all the debate this evening um, I think there's a number of concerns I think the vetting process that would happen as the project moves forward or doesn't move forward um, will define what it ultimately looks like um, I suspect it won't look anything like this original proposal and in fact my biggest concern is that we don't really have anything other than a big a broad picture of what this might look like we have no real idea of what the details are so uh, I'm a little concerned about that but my ultimate concern here is that if if we decide to not accept this proposal this evening this property sits vacant for who knows how long. And for me, that's a problem. Um, I think that uh, we, we, have, um, we have an obligation to the city to investigate any opportunities that might benefit the city. And if ultimately it goes through the process and it looks entirely different than it, than it is originally proposed, that's fine. If it doesn't make it through the process, that's fine. But I think to say no right out of the gate is probably not uh, the way I'm going to vote tonight. So I will probably vote to support this. Question for the council is on the adoption of resolution 5423. Councilor Mishu and then with him. Councilor Mishu. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'd just like to thank Councilor Witham for going down memory lane. You refresh my memory how we got to this point. And I'd like to thank the members of the community coming out and talking about the project themselves, how this is going to affect them. Initially, I was in favor of this project because this community definitely needs more housing for people. But I understand where your concern is because I, former councilor uh, Dumont, lived in your neighborhood. And there's many times I've been invited to his house, especially when I first got on council, which he took me under his wing, helped me guide through the process. And I really liked your neighborhood. And I can understand this huge building coming in, people coming in with driving down the roads, it's a nice neighborhood. I hate to see any kid get hurt or even any adults walking around. Myself, personally, I see that in my neighborhood. People fly down Main Street. Sometimes I'm walking down Main Street. I'm wondering if I'm walking down Main Street Summersworth or am I walking along the Spalding Turnpike? So with that being said, I'm still on the fence. But I hear your concerns. I'm willing to see the process go through. It has to go through zoning, planning, you name it, and it might not go through anyways. But at the same time, I'm so frustrated with certain people voicing their opinions, and I'm not proud when I'm hearing behind the scenes while other people are talking. But I'm leaning towards what Councillor Messia said probably, oh, was it a couple hours ago? Let the building just sit there and let it go. So, thank you, Your Honor. Question for the council is on the adoption of resolution 5423. Council Witham and then Vincent. Council Witham. Thank you. Um, you know, sometimes you have to tee up a project to be successful. Uh, we recently agreed to sell the police station. Um, 
in the history there, again, I feel like a historian, and trust me, history was my least favorite subject in school. Sorry, Your Honor. Never, never liked it. That hurts. Put me in a statistics class all day, crunch the numbers, love it, right? That, not so much. But the police station site had to become a more viable option for a developer. And that happened through the city applying for a number of grants, uh, Brownfields grants and things of that nature to clean up the asbestos, PCBs, and other contaminants that were throughout the property there. Once we had a clean bill of health for the building, we decided what's the best way to market that property. We hired a realtor, uh, Heather Kretschmeyer, and rather quickly sold the building. Uh, I'll give Heather some of the credit, but I think a lot of it goes to the fact that we had a clean building finally, right? So uh, that worked out. We do have some unknowns with the current property, though two levels of site assessment have been done. And uh, oddly enough, at least what we know, uh, it's cleaner than we perhaps initially thought. Back to history. When we built the Idlehurst Elementary School, and some of you were on the council at the time or involved at the time, there was a line that went out that door and down and talked about traffic impacts. And although I think there have been some traffic impacts associated with Idlehurst School, none of them were nearly as bad as what were articulated uh, that night. Close by, when the Sunningdale development was proposed, there was a line of people that went out the door and onto the sidewalk outside and talked not only about traffic impacts, but more importantly, about impacts to our school system, none of which have been realized. Uh, Sunningdale is now a complete build out. I believe the number is 89 homes. And at last check, it generates two kids in our school system. So it's had no impact on our school system. Eighty-five Elm Street, when that was proposed, there was a long line of people at the zoning board and planning board meetings saying, don't build it. It's too big. We don't want it. Some folks tonight have talked about the other properties in the city that are owned by Chinberg and why didn't he propose building those there? Good thought. I like it. Uh, but guarantee you if he decided to build these property, these buildings on the property here on Main Street, we'd have just a different contingent of folks from Depot Street and River Street saying it's going to generate too much traffic, it's too big, uh, so on and so forth. So any development comes with impacts. And those impacts affect the people that live nearby. I get it. If I lived on Crest Drive or Drew Road or Edmund Street or Guy Street or Maple Street, I'd be sitting where you are. I get it, right? Because we want to protect what we've worked so hard for and what we pay taxes for, um, the views that we've gotten used to waking up to, the traffic that we're used to, whether we like it or not, we're used to it, right? So those are always impacts. I'd love to see a project that brings more kids to the community. I think that's important. I think that's a positive impact. Our enrollment numbers are low. The mayor was out of town, so I spoke in his place at the high school graduation to 80 graduates of Summersworth High School, 80. Those of you that grew up in this community, most, many of you, right? You graduated with a class size of 150, 175, maybe 200, right? It's now 80. And with the lack of kids in our school system, yes, more kids impacts the dollars a bit, right? But it impacts opportunities. There are less kids in classes. So you might not have advanced level classes because there aren't those kids. Our athletic programs are suffering because there aren't kids to participate in them. It's a struggle. The Little League Baseball, which we've all talked about here tonight, on infinitum. When my son, not too many years ago, what, he's 23 now, so that goes back, what, 10, 13, eh, 17 years ago, there were six teams at Summersworth Little League. He made it as a nine-year-old, but barely. He went on to play college baseball. He was a pretty good baseball player. There are three teams there now, barely. 
we have a lack of kids in our community and that's a lack of opportunity. So we need projects that will bring kids to our community, in my humble opinion. Not everybody shares that. I do think, though, that this project just seems too big. Again, I favor the residential opportunity, but I think this one is too big. And I hear Councillor Vincent about the amount of money that the developer would have to expend to go through this process. So before throwing the baby out with the bathwater, I think it requires us to do a little bit of chat with the developer. I motion the table and send this back to economic development. Councillor Witham moves that resolution 5423 be so far as tabled. Um, we referred to economic development for discussion with the developer to see if they'd be in support of a smaller scale project. I'm, I'm working through my head your motion because when you're tabled, you're not acting upon. Um, but you're re-referring it. There can be no action if it's placed upon the table. Can I just make a motion you to re-refer? Yeah, so that, that motion, unfortunately, that motion does not work because the, yes, you can make a motion to re-refer, and I'll just guide you through why the motion to table and re-refer I'm following, because tabling yeah. you can't Ta do anything. Tabling means you cannot do anything, which means the Economic Development Committee could not touch it. You can do a motion. A motion of re-refer to the Economic Development Committee is within order. I'm making that motion to re-refer. Councillor, and that is of higher motion because it is a motion to re-refer. The Councillor Witham moves that resolution, that is a debatable motion, that resolution 5423 be so far as, that resolution 5423 be re-referred to the Economic Development Committee. Is there a second on that motion? Seconded by Councillor Gibson. Discussion on the motion of re-refer. Councillor Vincent. If, thank you, Your Honor. I have no problems re, you know, put it back to that committee, but I won't have my final comment that I need to make on this, on this right now. Closing comments, and I'll be asking okay, for Okay, I'll agree with that. I'll be asking I'll for agree another with that. motion here in a moment. That's good, thank you. The question for the council is on a motion of re-referring resolution 5423 to the Economic Development Committee. Further discussion on the motion. Councilor Witham. Yeah, quite simply, the developer might say, you know, yes, we've done some homework already at scale. A project of this size is what we need to make the math work. That'll clean up whether it can be smaller or not. Or they might be willing to work with us on something that's uh, more amenable to the community and to this council. So, Question for the council is on the motion of re-referring re resolution 5423 to the Economic Development Committee. Further discussion on the motion. None being so. If you are in favor of the re-refer motion, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Austin. Yes. Misho. Yes. Witham. Yes. Girding. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. No. Resolution 5423 is re-referred to the Economic Development Committee. Before I proceed any further, uh, being a time watch guy, being one who operates under deadlines and time, uh, we are at t uh, 20 of 10 council rules prohibit us to meet beyond 10 o'clock unless there is a suspension of the rules. So therefore the chair will obtain a suspension of council rules. Councilor Austin moves that city council rules be so far as suspended as allow us to continue to meet after the 10 o'clock hour, seconded by Councilor Vincent. Question for the council is on suspension of council rules. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes have it. City council rules are so far as suspended. Brings us to agenda item numbers. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll br we've been at it for a bit, so council will take a five minute recess. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. I'm sure everyone's dying here. I know, my knees are here. My knees are here. <laughs>
3. Whereas the City Council adopted Resolution 3523 on March 6, 2023, authorizing the City Manager to contract with GMI Asphalt Inc. for fiscal year 2023 sidewalk repair and reconstruction. And whereas the City Council authorized a total contract amount not to exceed $140,000. And whereas project conditions such as the amount of asphalt needed at certain transitions to keep the sidewalks ADA compatible and the amount of seed and loam used to finish disturbed areas caused the total contract to exceed $140,000 to a final project cost of $158,587. And whereas the Public Works and Environment Committee met with city staff and recommends amending the contract with GMI Asphalt Inc. for the additional project cost. And whereas the Finance Committee met with City staff and recommends amending the contract with GMI Asphalt Inc. for the additional project cost. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to amend the contract with GMI Asphalt Inc. of Belmont, New Hampshire for fiscal year 2023 sidewalk repair and reconstruction to an amount not to exceed $158,587. Sponsored by Councillors David A. Witham, Dennis Messier, Donald Austin, Martin Pepin, Richard Michaud, Robert Gibson, Kenneth S. Vincent, approved City Attorney. Your Honor, Honor, I'd like to make a motion to suspend Council Rules to give it a second reading this evening. I'd like to second that. Councilor Witham moves that City Council Rules be so far as suspended as to allow a second reading on Resolution 124 this evening. Seconded by Councillor Vincent. The question for the Council is on suspension of Council Rules. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nope. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And City Council Rules are so far as suspended. Chair recognizes the Clerk for a second reading on Resolution 124. Resolution number 124, to authorize the city manager to amend the contract with GMI Asphalt Inc. of Belmont, New Hampshire for fiscal year 2023 sidewalk repair and reconstruction project. Resolution 124 have been ready first and second time is open to further amendment. No amendment be it offered. The chair will obtain a motion on resolution 124. Councilor Witham. Move for its adoption. Councilor Witham moves the adoption of resolution 124, seconded by Councilor Vincent. Discussion? None being so. If you are in favor of the adoption. I, uh, Councilor Vincent. Thank you. I just, I just want to say that uh, I don't know if any of the other councilors know, but this project overran because of things that were for unforeseen in this project, and I wasn't sure if the chairman was going to speak about it or not. Um, I spoke about it during my report of the finance. Okay, question. thank you very much, and I'm all done. Question before the council is on the adoption of Resolution 124. If you were in further discussion. None being so, if you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 124, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Austin. Yes. Misho. Yes. Witham. Yes. Girding. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yes. Resolution 124 is adopted. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on Resolution 224. Resolution number 224, to authorize the city manager to execute the joint powers agreement of the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire and to form an electric aggregation committee known as the Summersworth Community Power Committee, July 10th, 2023. Whereas the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire was created as a separate entity in, in accordance with New Hampshire RSA 53-A in order to jointly support the implementation and operation of community power aggregations and related energy programs and to offer membership on the same mutually advantageous terms to all municipalities and counties throughout the state of New Hampshire. And whereas the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire has currently grown to approximately 33 member cities and towns throughout the state of New Hampshire. And whereas the city of Summersworth would like to join the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire in order to provide the residents and businesses of the city the opportunity to access a competitive electric power supplier utilizing the benefits of community power aggregation. And whereas an electric aggregation com committee named the Summersworth Community Power Committee is required to be created in order to implement a community power aggregation plan for the city of Summersworth. And whereas the city shall establish the Summersworth Community Power Committee consisting of five members, said, said membership established as follows. Two city councilors appointed by the mayor, one planning board member appointed by the planning board chair, one Summersworth business owner appointed by the mayor, one Summersworth resident appointed by the mayor. Now therefore be it resolved by the city council of the city of Summersworth 
that the city manager is authorized to execute the joint powers agreement of the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire and to take any other actions necessary to become party to the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire and be it further resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that an electric aggregation committee named the Summersworth Community Power Committee shall be established. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Donald Austin, Robert Gibson, Richard Michaud, approved City Attorney. Your Honor. Um, just uh, like to be added as a sponsor to this resolution. Without objection, we'll add your name, Councilor Gibson. I'd like to move to suspend rules to, for a second reading on the resolution. Councilor Gibson moves that City Council rules be so far as suspended as to allow a second reading on Resolution 224 this evening. Is there a second? Seconded by Councilor Messier. Question where the Council is on suspension of Council rules. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no? no? No. Chair is in doubt, we'll request a roll call. If you are in favor of suspension of Council rules, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councilor Pepin. No. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Austin? No. Michaud? No. Witham? No. Girding? Yes. Cameron? No. Messier? Yes. City Council rules are not suspended. Resolution 224 will remain in first reading until the next regular <laughs> scheduled meeting. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on Resolution 324. Your Honor, I'd like to move that Council rules be suspended to read by title only. Councilor Witham moves that City Council rules be so far suspended as to allow Resolution 324 to be read by title. I'll second that. Title only, seconded by Councilor Vincent. The question for the Council is on suspension of Council rules. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no? No. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and City Council rules are so far as suspended. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on Resolution 324 by title only. Resolution number 324 to authorize the city manager to negotiate a lease extension with Hideout Golf Inc. to operate and maintain an 18-hole public golf course known as the Oaks Golf <laughs> Course in Summersworth, New Hampshire. Resolution 324 will remain in first reading until the next regular scheduled meeting. We have uh, two votes under other, other A, a vote to host the New Hampshire School Funding Fairness Project event. The vote will be to host um, the project. I will yield to or recognize, I'm sorry, <coughs> Councilor Girding. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this came uh, as a request from me. Um, I was uh, reached out to by the New Hampshire School Funding Fairness Project, which is a nonprofit operating out of Concord, New Hampshire, that uh, tours the state discussing uh, educational equity and the funding system for the state of New Hampshire and how it uh, essentially inequitably funds public schools. Uh, they are looking to do larger communities that have some of the more dramatic um, inequalities within state funding. Uh, ours is, I believe, like within the top 10, so they were hoping they could host an event with us. Uh, they did come to our community five years ago, something like that, um, and hosted an event. Um, however, there's been a change in leadership, a change in staffing, um, and they've essentially uh, tweaked their presentation to include more information about uh, the current state budget and the changes that have been uh, implemented uh, in the recently adopted budget. Uh, so hopefully uh, it is more up to, to date with uh, modern information and <coughs> is uh, more directly uh, related to how uh, we might see education funding change over the next year or so. Um, with all that said, uh, we as a council have spoken extensively about um, how inequitable state funding is for our public schools here in the community. Um, and I felt like it would be important for us to sponsor this event and say that uh, we are willing to host it and uh, kind of partner with them in this nonprofit to make this event happen. It also just gets the word out there a little bit more and hopefully we can get more people to attend uh, and learn a little bit about um, what the state kind of does in terms of education funding. That's all. Question for the council is a vote to host the New Hampshire School Funding Fairness Project event. Further discussion. Councilor Vincent. Is there a cost to it? No, no Thank cost. Thank you. They do it all. It's okay. Thank you. Question for the council is a vote to host the New Hampshire School Funding Fairness Project event. Further discussion. None being so. All those in favor of hosting the event, please state by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And the authorization to hold the event is accepted. Other under B, a vote to approve the city historical marker program as recommended by the Mayor's Commission on Culture, Ethnicity, and the Arts and the Finance Committee. The vote will be to approve 
the marker program. Discussion. Councilor Gibson. I think it's a great idea to do this. It will commemorate the history of the city as well as the diversity. Nice. Question for the council is on the approval of the historic marker program. Further discussion? None being so, all those in favor of the approval of the historic marker program, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Nope. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and the marker program is approved. Brings us to agenda item number 17, which is closing comments by visitors. Any closing comments by visitors? Please come forward, state your name, your address, and the ward you live in if you have that applicable information. Any closing comments by visitors this evening? Oh, you had to go and screw it up, John, didn't you? <laughs> Good evening and welcome. Hello, my name is Don. Come on, Mr. Hood, you know the button. Come on, you, already, you know the drill. <laughs> Hello, my name is Donald Hood. I live on... Uh, Lily Pond Road. Anyways, uh, I got here late. I didn't get opening comments. I thought it was very interesting uh, uh, what you did tonight regarding the uh, residential development project. And uh, I don't know how to say this, but Chinberg is a big developer, and he's done a lot of good in the state of New Hampshire and everything. But uh, he comes to town, and I just don't, I hope that our city council doesn't give away uh, good pieces of pro uh, property. Uh, that's a nice four-acre piece of property, whether it ends up uh, as a community center or gets redeveloped single family or whatever. But I heard a number like $200,000, and it's like, to me, that's chump change. Uh, I don't know how much money this guy's going to make if he puts in 200 apartments, but, you know, uh, I just think, and I don't know where those numbers come from, but to me, I, it's like you're giving that piece of property away regardless of what you do with it. So that, that's my only comment. But I, I am very impressed with the way you run your meeting, Dana, and everybody... Uh, gets along and, and a lot of good information. Thank you. Thank you. Any further closing comments by visitors? Any further closing comments by visitors? Good evening and welcome. Hello. Yeah, just right, right, in, right in the back. There you go. Perfect. Cool. Ah, there we go. Hello, I'm Jack Gage. I live at Four Royal Drive. Unit 304 in Thomas Apartments by the Market Basket. Um, I'm really, it's been really interesting coming out here and uh, hearing everyone's opinions on this and just um, all, all about this uh, potential new development. Um, I'm very open-minded on this, but I want to emphasize that we need more housing here in New Hampshire. I pay above um, the U.S. national um, average for rent I, I'm a cybersecurity engineer. I, um, and I'm very lucky to have the position that I have. I um, know it would be a lot harder for someone who might not be, um, might uh, not have such a, a salary as much as mine. But I do need to emphasize that we really do need more housing. It's important. Um, I, I, the traffic situation is totally understandable. I know the traffic here is rough. Um, like I said, I'm open-minded, I, but I just want to make sure you understand that, that us renters, we, you know, we, um, we really do need more housing. I think it would be beneficial for our community. I think it would be beneficial for New Hampshire. I know I'm not the only one who thinks this. Um, so, yeah, just please keep that in mind, and thank you for your time. Thank you for coming this evening. Further closing comments by visitors. Any further closing comments by visitors? Paul Goodwin, <clears throat> Chimbrook Properties. Just wanted to thank the council for your thoughtful discussion and consideration, and we look forward to continuing the conversation with economic development. Thank you. Any further closing comments by visitors? Any further closing comments by visitors? None being so, that will bring us to agenda, agenda item number 18, which is closing comments by council members. And we'll start with Ward 1 Councilor, Councilor Pepin. Try to make it quick. Um, my opinion about 
uh, the Elm Street project. I think the historical district has gone too far. So if this council has any inkling of trying to reduce the, the district a little bit, I'm all in favor of, in favor of it. You have my support. Um, second thing is is that hopefully the fire station is going to be the, the firefighters are going to be moving into the second phase. Hopefully, start occupying the new part of the structure. I we were planning on having on the next council meeting a ribbon cutting ceremony. I don't know if the city manager still has that in the plan, but I uh, just want to make sure the council is aware of that. So hopefully, and also we're probably going to have a blessing of uh, engine five, the new truck. So uh, so to bring that back, to have that in service, and so the council has a chance to look at that <coughs> also. And also, I just want to make it out to the public that there will be a, a, a open house at the fire station, a new fire station, in the week of October on Fire Prevention Week. The date hasn't been set, but we look forward to everybody coming in and, and looking at the facility. So uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Ward 2, Councilor. Councilor Vincent. I'll be quick. The Elm Street project or the Elm Street property, they should tear that hotel down and on half of the property put a three-story parking garage and then put another building in front of it on Washington Street so it blocks it. Maybe that'll be phase two. Um, I just wanted to say one more comment about the uh, armory uh, that, yeah, we don't know what the property is actually worth, and I don't know what it would take to go out and find out what it's worth, uh, but that would be nice. And it, we wouldn't be do, being due diligence as counselors if we didn't know what that property was worth and going out just being blind and taking whatever we want. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Ward 3, Counselor. Counselor Gibson. No comment. Thank you, Counselor. Ward 4, Counselor. Counselor Austin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I think the action taken by the Historic District Commission uh, with regard to the Elm Street property um, needs to be taken a look at. I think that I understand the explanations given by counselors this evening on why that action was taken. Um, I'm not convinced that they have the best interests of Somersworth in mind when they come to that decision. I think that it's really important uh, to find a way, if there is a way, to have that project continue. I think it's vital to the uh, economic survival of our downtown. I think it's important as we begin to develop the rest of Main Street that you know other developers recognize that some are <coughs> willing to work with them and, and to create a, a downtown environment that we all have been working towards for so long. And to just have... Um, the HTC make a decision that in effect knocks that completely offline and we may never know what, you know what we could have realized for economic development in the city I think um, deserves a second look if there's a way for us to uh, take a look not I don't know if we can look at the decision itself I think we need to look at the operation of the HTC and see if it makes sense thank you Ward 5 counselor counselor Mishu yeah thank you honor Everything that Councillor Austin said, I agree with him. I rewatched that meeting of the HGC today. I watched it when it first was on. Needless to say, I was pretty mad like a wet hen, as you might say. But today, I rewatched it, calmed down, and I actually come back with a new perspective. I understood where most of the council or members of the HGC were coming from. The developer, I couldn't even believe that he actually changed the design, the look of the outside of the building the way he did compared to what initially was agreed upon. Because I actually happened to see the new look, and I'll tell you, it's nothing to look at. It's just like another building going by. The original building they approved looked really nice. So if we ever do decide to relook at the size of the district, I'm in favor of that. But the only thing I want to request that uh, the chairman there, uh, Laura Barry, I want her to make sure she, she's on that committee also. She is the really voice of reason and really held most of that group together that night. So if we move forward with the committee to review the size of it, I'm in favor. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Counselor. Moving to the at-large side, at-large, Counselor. Counselor Witham. HDC, the hot button issue, right? So. Uh, Again, I don't know if reducing the size is what needs to happen, maybe, uh, or allowing a conversation around cost to be part of the, the conversation. <laughs> and I'll put 85 Elm Street aside for a second. 
and I'm going to go back to my one of my favorite HDC stories. Uh, I believe it was on Grove Street where a property owner had a stacked cinder block wall that was failing and falling into the city sidewalk. Certainly not historic cinder blocks, right, uh, that were perhaps improperly installed that were holding back the front lawn. But they were falling into the city sidewalk. And the city actually cited the property owner, one of those many citations that Councillor Messier references that said, hey, you have to fix this wall. After some time, the property owner, landlord, decided to fix the wall. And he came in front of the HDC at the time and was proposing to use those stackable, more aesthetically pleasing concrete blocks that you kind of tear back. Uh, certainly a more modern application. It's not boulders or dry stacked granite or anything of that nature, but certainly a heck of a lot more pleasing than the caving in concrete block. The HDC said, no, those are modern blocks that you're using. Again, even though it's better than what you have, and everybody at the HDC said that, it's better than what you have, but it's not historic. Could you, they, and they tabled it. They said, come back with uh, a plan to use either dry boulders or dry stacked granite. And the property owner said, yes, I'll do that. So he came back and it was, I'm gonna use a number like $30,000 more to use the historically accurate retaining wall. The HDC said, no, we, we don't like the, the block. You have to go with this. It was $30,000 difference. So what stayed in place was the city cited. It made no sense to me. It was going to be better than what it was. That's a financial piece. And I, I don't think we can be blind to that. I get that it is now. I think it needs to be fixed. We can't be blind to that. The other thing that I think is important, and 85 Elm Street speaks to this, and the HDC has wrangled with this on occasion, on Winter Street of late, uh, with a small home that was built there, uh, the replacement of a home on, was it Emory Street that burned? Yep. When all of a sudden we build a new structure in the historic district. Well, it's not historic, it's brand new. So what are we trying, who are we trying to fool here by what it is? Now, I don't want an eyesore of a project and it needs to have certain appeal, but I'm not so sure it needs to meet all of that. So I, I, I think just 85 Elm Street brings up a couple of dilemmas that we have with the HDC, and I welcome the opportunity to work on it, to use the, what I said earlier. I don't think we need to throw the baby out with the bath water, but we need to warm the temperature up of the water because it's not good right now, right? So uh, an important uh, thing for us uh, to look at. And more importantly tonight and lastly, I want to extend my condolences to the Summersworth Fire Department, the members there, certainly to the chief, uh, the passing of firefighter Brian Flood, 35 years old, active member of our fire department, a great firefighter, died tragically off duty. Um, from everything that I heard from his uh, peers and colleagues, from the chief, uh, this was a tremendous individual. Uh, he served the United States Marine Corps prior to coming to us here in Summersworth. Um, as I shared with many, uh, Brian did more in 35 years than most of us that live a full life will ever do. So thank you, Brian, for your service to country and to our community, and condolences to the members of the fire department. Thank you, Councillor. At-large, Councillor. Councillor Girding. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, thank you for the reminder. Yeah, uh, my condolences as well. That was awful to read and um, hear about, and I have so, so... Um, so, so sorry to members of his family, uh, friends, and those that he worked with. Uh, what a tragedy for this community. Um, I also wanted to mention HDC. Um, I actually uh, wanted to defend their actions. I really was proud of the way that uh, they handled this project initially, um, the way that they, the members of the HDC worked uh, hand in hand with the developers to ensure a project that fit their needs as well as those of the district. Um, uh, again, we went through three or four designs initially to get to the one that was agreed upon by the members of the HCC and the developers uh, for the 85 Elm Street project, and I was really impressed with how that process went. 
What, um, for those who probably watched the meeting you saw, I was very disappointed with the proposal that the developer brought forward suddenly uh, to change the 85 Elm Street project because it was very out of line with their initial uh, process that we all went through. Uh, I think it was quite shocking to get this brand new kind of entire redesign of the building uh, with when we were quite familiar with working hand in hand with them to come up with something that fit uh, the needs of the community. Um, and so I think that that uh, potentially went into at least mine and maybe others' uh, reactions that night and the reason why we uh, uh, essentially didn't support uh, their proposal. Um, but again, at that night I requested, uh, and I think other members did as well, that the developers try to work with us and listen to the conversation that we were having and try to sit, you know, hear us out and say, like, we agreed to this, 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 this already. Um, and now you're coming back saying you want to strike all that out and not do any of it. Um, so we're a bit surprised. Let's try to find some middle uh, ground that we can all work on. We're hearing you about this financial piece, but again, we can't consider that. It's not within our rules to do so. But at minimum, we want to try to make this project happen, maybe try to come back with another idea that takes this, this, this into consideration. Unfortunately, developers were unwilling to do that. We offered the table to them uh, so that we could work on this proposal further, but there was no willingness from them to do so, which, um, again, was surprising considering they had been so flexible in the past. Um, so, I, again, I appreciate the members of the HCC. I felt like, uh, yes, certainly, uh, they went between a rock and a hard place. Uh, and again, I am fully in agreement with uh, Councillor Witham on his desires to maybe relook at whether uh, we can consider financial uh, burden as one of the reasons for uh, proposals. Um, and again, agree with uh, Councillor Mishu that if we do form some sort of commission or group to look at this and examine it, that we at least include members of the HCC so that they can have their voices heard as well, uh, particularly our, our chairwoman. She would be a great addition to that conversation. Um, a few more things, I'm sorry, I know it's been a long night. Um, quite excited about seeing Community Power Coalition uh, make its way uh, to this body. I really hope that we support this in moving forward. I can't wait for that. It was something I've been talking about for a while. I'm very excited for it. Um, I was so glad to see also the Finance Committee discuss Will and Pond and improvements that were needed there um, because I literally this week got, uh, I think it was actually not even an email, it was a text message from a resident being like, can you please bring up Will and Pond? It looks so awful, it's so hard to walk. Um, so you guys were already one step ahead, so I so appreciate that. I uh, love committee work for that. And lastly, very excited with the Ash Street Park project uh, and more than happy to help with anything that needs to be done there. So. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. At large, Councillor. Councillor Cameron. Thank you, Anna. Um, I'm very happy about the Ash Street uh, Butterfly Park because now we have a timeline and we have some frames on when things will be done. So that is very exciting. And thank you to Home Depot for their grant. I also get a lot of comments about Willen Park because I'm, I'm out there and Fenway has friends out there now, so they know me. And I appreciate the Finance Committee and Director of Public Works for reacting for when I send pictures of <coughs> what's going on out there and you know if somebody could get hurt with the planks being up. So thank you so much for that. I was very excited when one of my friends had walked out there and said, hey, did you see this? Have you been out there yet? They fixed a couple of the boards. So thank you very much for that. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. At large, Councillor. Councillor Messier. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, 85 Elm Street, so I don't sound like a hypocrite. I've never supported the Omri project, so take that as true. 85 Elm Street, though, and the East Historical Dist uh, District Commission, I do not believe they had the city's interest at heart um, because the developer most likely is going to walk because if I was a developer, that's what I would do. I'd say enough is enough. We've lost tax revenue. We have lost the tearing down of Profile Garage and the building behind it, the building on Elm Street, and the hotel, because the same developer purchased or was going to purchase the hotel property. So all that is gone. 
Also, what's gone is Chapel Street was going to be totally repaired. So that's not going to happen. And fit, it didn't fit the community. And it was my understanding because of a brick facade. Tell me where in that part of town over there where there's brick facade other than Chandler School, the former Greek church, St. Martin. So don't tell me that it's because of a brick facade. Hence the word facade. It was just a facade. Anything is better to help the impetus of getting that part of the community fixed up. But no, if the historical district commission wants to be, just keep them up on the hill. That's why I'm in favor of, I don't know how that got on historical district. I mean, other than, I mean, because you cannot tell me that that section of Green Street and Franklin Street, that intersection, has any historical value. I mean, I have some choice words in my but I'm not going to use them tonight. I'll use them all. But, so, I think they erred greatly. I think that district needs to be shrunk. And I don't even, I, you know, Mr. Austin, has, even if I, you know what, I'm a person, if we can get rid of the historical district, I don't care. And the commission, too. Bye. Because they have not done this community any favors by making that developer walk. That, develop, that developer, like Mr. Chimberg, could have done some wonderful things for the downtown. But that's all gone. That's all gone. Because of five people. Two had common sense, five didn't. Um, that's enough of that. I, it just frustrates me. It's just, I can't believe it. The walking trails, like Woolen Pond and possibly doing another one at Mallee Farm. I would hope that we think long and hard about adding to walking trails. If we do, you need to understand, or somebody in the administration, that it comes with a responsibility that we need to maintain that. Those bridges, and don't tell me, well, we don't have the money. What do you mean you don't have the money? Primex or whoever would, would be appalled if they seen that. We need to find the money. Um, first of all, if they did it with the planking that I see, it should have been two by six, not PEX, but I didn't have any say in that. So we have a responsibility with walking trails. Um, and well, I completed the housing questionnaire today. They should be interesting. Uh, when they get that. Um, in the solar field, I guess, uh, is going to happen because I was downstairs today and there were two checks paying for their permit. So, you know, there are some <laughs> brighter things happening in town. <laughs> uh, and concerning the Omri project, maybe we need to hire Ms. Kretschmar to try to market the property. I'm so, not even trying that with you. You owe me. Thank you. I guess, I hope we August is the next meeting, right? It is. Maybe it should be January <laughs> instead. No, January, <laughs> I probably won't be here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. <laughs> Councilor Mishu moves at the City Council stand in adjournment. Hey, Tiger, can you sit down? Seconded by Councilor Vincent. Question for the Council is on adjournment. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those aye. opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And City Council stands adjourned.